And we welcome you back to the ST Bank broadcast booth. ST Bank people forward banking moments away from kickoff in Salzburg between River Valley and Connemaw Township. Just enough time for us to get to our keys to the game. Brought to you by Luther Ford Lincoln and Homer City and the Luther family of dealerships, including the new Luther Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambrian. For our keys to the game today, here is Chuck Clark. All right, Jack, thank you very much for the River Valley Panthers. Uh, they want to see improvement on both sides of the football. A year ago, averaging just 17 points a game, while well, they gave up 30. So if they want to score more, cut down the points they give up. Pretty much the same case for this uh, Connemaw Township team. They were giving up an average of 34 points a game one year ago. So both these defenses need to improve, and we also look for some uh, improvements made on the River Valley offense as well. Those are our keys to the game, driven by Luther Ford and the Luther family of dealerships. Well, time for talk is behind us. It's time for kickoff. We'll take a timeout, come back. Kickoff from Salzburg at Memorial Stadium, River Valley, Connemaw Township. Next, this has been our ITT pregame show. First quarter presented by friends of Jim Struzzi is on the way on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. And we are seconds away from kickoff. The River Valley Panthers will kick off from right to left. The Kanama Township Indians winning the initial coin toss and will go left to right as they receive the opening kick. From the ST Bank broadcast booth, Jake Slobotnik and joining me, Chuck Clark. Lucas Wills is our studio engineer for today, bringing you coverage of high school football, Heritage Conference football here on Cat Country 106.3. Cole Heckathorn, the place kicker this year, tees it up, little line drive kick, and we're underway. It's a little dribbler, and it's picked up around the 19 by Connemaw Township. Running with it is Kaysen Yingling, and he's brought down around the 25, maybe the 26, and that's where Connemaw Township will set up shop for their inaugural drive in the Heritage Conference. He's going to be a factor tonight, Jake. These ball players are going to have to stay hydrated. You may see uh, some of the starters get a few more breaks just to give them a rest because while the sun is out, very warm and muggy conditions for this opening night. Yeah, as Chuck said, uh, very humid tonight, 81 degrees. Uh, sun is shining. It's actually covering the field, so not a bad night for football. But, yeah, cramping is going to be the big thing to look out for as the Indians come out decked in their white tops, black pants, and uh, Indian tribe helmets decor there. And John Updike will be the... Uh, starting quarterback for tonight. He takes it on the quarterback. Keep trying to elude some defenders. And an early flag. It only took one play into the season, and we have our first flag. It was uh, thrown around the area of the pile. Nathan Morshide, the senior lineman, making the tackle. That's something coaches do not want to see. They've been in preseason workouts now for a couple of weeks. Scrimmages last weekend. They do not like to see penalties first game of the year. But it will go up against the Indians, so the Panthers will be able to set that defense five yards deeper. So Chuck, we remember last year, uh, River Valley's defense came out early in the game. They would look strong, and it was always that second half. They mm -hmm. seemed to always sort of fall flat. Uh, but we're early on in the game. How important is it for River Valley to make us a three and out stop here? Well, it's very important. They want to get the football as soon as they can, and don't let Connemont Township get on the scoreboard early. Updike with three men to his left, takes a snap and hands it off to number 21, Dawson Stadler, but he's stuffed behind the line, and Nathan Morshide right there, another tackle, and no flags. That'll go back a couple of yards, and they'll be at the 20. I don't think, I think he might have got back to the line of scrimmage either way, second and 15. That's what you like to see, good pursuit by that defense. Second down, they're going to need 18 for the first down as the football now sits at the Connemaw Township 20-yard line. They actually chalked him up for a three-yard loss. And here comes second and long, second and 18 to be specific, double wides to each side. Updike in the gun, he's got a sidecar to his right. Updike takes a snap, drops back to pass, fires it to his left. It's a nice little leading pass, but just beyond the outstretched arm of Dawson Statler. Incomplete pass will bring up a third and 18. Looked like a pass that should have been caught. The defense laid off for River Valley, so the receiver had no nobody really bothered him at all. Football just dropped so, on the far sideline. So now here's what River Valley likes. They're, they got them deep in their own territory, third and 18. Connemaw Township under head coach Brandon Studer in his inaugural season. A lot of news for Connemaw Township this year. Come in with a typical shotgun offense, 4-3 look on defense. 
Panthers looking to send them to the defensive side here in the opening drive. 10.46 to go in the opening frame. Presented by friends of Jim Struzzi. Updike in shotgun set. Sidecar to his left. Drops back. Looking to pass. Scrambles left. Sensing some pressure. Fires it on the run. He's got a completed pass. And that is to his intended target, number six, Kyler Mozzie. Made it to the original line in about halfway, maybe six, maybe uh, four yards, excuse me, to the chains. It'll be a fourth down. And uh, we'll see where they mark that. Uh, three yards, so a 15-yard reception. First completed pass, and that brings up a fourth and three. And they're going to send out the punting unit. Two receiver or two returnees go back for River Valley. That's Dom Spiel on the left and Sam Yanitz on the right. So it'll be a punt from the 36-yard line at the far hash on the left and a very weak cunt, uh, punt, that is, on the left side. And it goes out of bounds at around the 45-yard uh, line, and that's where River Valley will set up shop. Great field position for their opening drive of the season. And uh, might be a couple yards beyond that, so they're closer toward midfield. Well, Luke Woodring, the veteran quarterback, he's a senior now. He's going to lead this River Valley offense. A year ago, through 166 times, completed 74, 917 yards, seven touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Luke Woodring leads the River Valley offense out for their first possession of the season. He sends a man in motion. That brings quad wide receivers to the left side, and already a false start on River Valley. It seemed like the entire receiving core was not on the same page with quarterback Luke Woodring. Well, penalties are now even at one apiece. And ironically, they both come on the, the, first, on the first play yeah. of the drive. So now setting them back five yards from the far hash. River Valley working right to left in their opening possession. Woodring takes it on the quarterback keep. He was going right out of the gate. He's got some real estate at the 45, the 50, the 45. They're in Indian territory, knocked out of bounds. Big gain by Luke Woodring. He might have got the first. If not, he's about a yard shy. And he's greeted by head coach Jess Hauser as he moves the chains. A 15-yard rush by Luke Woodring. Good block by Gavin Burkhardt, who sprung Luke Woodring on that left side of the line. And that's the first big play of this uh, 2023 season for the Panthers. And now they tread into Indian territory for the first time today. And there's a whistle on the field. No laundry. I don't know what's uh, hold up here. But either way, River Valley, their first first down of the season, comes off the feet of Luke Woodring, something he's worked on over the course of the year. And now he empties the set. Three wideouts to the right side. Yanitz from the left goes in motion. He takes it on the jet sweep. He's pushed back behind the line. Defense snubbed that out, and that's about a four- to five-yard loss. A little bit of a bobble there by Sam on that handoff from Luke. Was not able to turn the corner. He'll lose about four. They'll put it at the 49. Second and 13, they're going to mark it. So loss of three. I'm really excited to see what Sam does this year because last mm -hmm. year we saw him take great strides. Then he just suffered a, a midseason injury, kept him out several weeks. Then he comes back in the Everett game. Three touchdown performance. That was a great performance to end off on. Six games, he ran for 240 yards and four touchdowns. Second and 13, nine minutes on the clock, and another flag, this one on River Valley. Quint Whitmer would have got the handoff. Oh, no, it's going to be uh, encroachment on the defense. So that'll give River Valley a couple free yards. Jake, it should be noted there are no snap clocks here at the Salzburg Field. Yeah. Of course, they have a couple of blurs, but I don't know if they could just bring those down here, but that might, you know, give the quarterbacks, they have to keep their eye on that back official. He'll let them know how much time they have to get the snap off. Clock continues to run, 8.54. And our first quarter brought to you by friends of Jim Struzzi. The Indians need to scramble. They didn't look like they were set up right on defense. Woodring goes under center, two men behind him. He takes a snap, handoff, goes to Gavin Burkhardt. He finds a little bit of clearing. He's up to around the 35 and brought down at around the 34-yard line, maybe the 33. Either way, it's good for a first down. Some good blocking on that right side of the River Valley offensive line and a little bit of dancing in the backfield there by Gavin Burkhart, and he picks up the first down. Eight-yard carries. He needed eight. He got them all, and now that resets the downs. It's first and 10 at the 44. We forgot to mention our opening kickoff brought to you by Grand Beginnings Children's Center. Get your children ready to shine at Grand Beginnings Children's Center. 
From the gun, he's got two side cars to each, or one, he's got a side car to each side, two total. Woodring drops back, looking to pass. He fires it deep, looking for Ian, it's, oh, just out wow. of his reach. Good leading pass, just a couple yards ahead of him, and that'll be an incomplete pass. It'll bring up a second and 10. Yeah, you like to see uh, Woodring go long to the air. Yanis needed one more step to put that ball inside the 10 yard line. So I'll bring up a second and 10 for the Panthers. And coming to you from Salzburg tonight, first game that they're playing here in over a calendar year. I know some of the locals very happy about that. Woodring goes under center, takes a snap, pitch back to Burkhart, looking for an opening. He's got a couple blocks, hurdles a man. He gets forward for positive yardage. Not quite enough for the first, but maybe a third and seven coming up. And we remind River Valley fans, all the Panther home games this year will be played here at the Salzburg Field. Two-yard gain, bring us a third and eight. And yeah, that was something that was voted on at the River Valley School Board meeting, I believe, either in July or June. Uh, a lot of the Panther players voiced their support in doing this, including Jess Hauser, head coach. Uh, Gavin Burkhart and Luke Woodring, the main voices of that movement. As Woodring goes back under center, eight minutes to go in the first. Scoreless here. And Woodring boots to the right. He's got a wide open man. That's, that is uh, number 82, Merrick Smith. And he treads forward for the first down. It'll be first down in the red zone for Merrick Smith. All the way from the 31, and we'll see where they put it. 31 all the way to the, looks like at the 10. 21 yard gain by Woodring to Merrick Smith. Smith was wide open, nobody near him. And Luke Woodring put that ball right on the money. That's another in first bank, first down. Check out in first bank's rewards checking today. Seven and a half to go, ball on the far hash on the right side. Panthers, first and goal at the 10. Looking to score for the first time this season, the handoff. It goes to Yanitz, and he's stuffed at the line. Might have lost a yard or two. Yep, he lost one. You know, you mentioned the game's being played here at Salzburg. I live halfway between both schools, and I offered the field beside my house <laughs> if they wanted to use it, but the no takers on that. They didn't want to make life easier for you? <laughs> Harder for everybody else, but easier for Chuck Clark, I could have and that's visited what we want. the kitchen during halftime. <laughs> <laughs> under seven to go at 6.56 in the opening quarter, presented by friends of Jim Struzzi. Under center, Woodring, he's got uh, three men behind him. Defense showing blitz. Play action, Woodring fires toward the end zone, passes up and picked off by John Updike in the end zone. Woodring telegraphed that pass and floated it up. That was an easy takeaway by Updike. Good for him to be there, though he had to change directions too. He comes away with the pick. Well, Conoma Township will take over at the 20-yard line. We'll take 30 seconds and come back. Actually, no, we'll, we'll keep it right here. They're just moving along. Uh, Hold on one second, let me just update my scorebook here. So now, first and 10 for Connemont Township, their second drive of the day. First time they were forced to go three and out and punt it away. 6.41 to go. In this opening quarter, nothing, nothing our score as Connemont Township takes over. Snap, update on the quarterback, keep. Makes suck. Uh, Forward progression, maybe three or four yards on that carry. I am not just surprised to see John Updike carry that football from the quarterback spot because last year he was one of their leading running backs. He had 15 touchdowns. This year they moved into the quarterback position. Gain of six will bring up second and four. And here we go, second and four, 6-10 to go in the first quarter. Operating in shotgun set yet again. They're overloading that right side with blockers. Sidecar to Updike's right. Snap. It's going to be a pitch out to the right. And this is to Statler, and he's snuffed out by the defense. Maybe a loss of one, possibly two. River Valley doing a good job so far of reading those pitch plays, Chuck. Yeah, I'll tell you who made the difference on that play. Brad McDivitt, he got to the running back first, didn't make the tackle, but slowed him down enough that he got help from some of his linebackers to come up and make the tackle. Brings up a third and 
Now let's see where they place the ball. They place it at the 26, so it looks like no gain, so it'll be a third and four. River Valley looking to force Connemaw Township to go three and out for the second straight drive. Updike and shotgun set, sidecar to his right. Blocker to his left, double wides to the right, and one to the left. He drops back the pass, and he's sensing some pressure. Caden Barnhart broke through the walls, and now Updike will tuck it and run, trying to get that first. He does maybe a yard or two after that, so he needed four. He got about five, and a first down for Connemaw Township. Our first downs of the season brought to you by In First Bank. Check out In First Bank's rewards checking today. Updike has good size for a quarterback, 6'2", 195, and I think if uh, River Valley continues to put good pass coverage on the receivers. We're going to see Updike carry the football a lot more tonight. Again, the first game, uh, it's going to take a while for both of these teams to sort of find their groove, so wouldn't be surprised if we ended this first quarter scoreless, but, hey, you never know what's going to happen. Updike making some good forward progression here in this second drive for Connemouth Township with a fresh set of downs, first and 10 at the 32. Updike this time will go under center. He's got three men behind him. Takes a snap, hands it off. Here's Statler running to the left. Megan forward progression, and he's brought down about three to four yards shy of the first. Good run by Statler. Micah Griffith on the stop, and we'll see Dom Bartolini come in on defense, adding to that defensive line. Seven-yard carry, ring up a second and three from the 39. Four ten to go. Sun is now starting to set. Field temperature should be dropping a little bit right now. Cutting cooler up here, I can tell you that. I'm just hoping it doesn't rain because we took all the windows out. Know. Yes, we do have some clouds <laughs> to our right. Under four, 356. Updike hands it off. This is a new man, number 23. Um, get the name for you here in just a second. Liam Richardson. Liam Richardson. Uh, oh, I didn't see him at first. And he gets the first. Needed about three, got seven. So we'll bring up another first down by In First Bank, brought to you by uh, In First, that is, all season long. It's going to take me some getting used to to get some of these live reads out. 3.30 to go in the first quarter, and the Connemaw Township looking to tread into enemy territory for the first time today under center's Updike. He takes it, hands it off here, Statler to the left. He's brought down by his toes, gets across the 50, about a two-yard carry. Connemaw Township on a power eye setup on that play. So he had blockers ahead of him, but uh, only picked up a couple of yards. I think they're starting to get into a rhythm here on offense, Chuck. They've yeah. been going uh, with that running back core and Updike occasionally taking it forward for a couple of yards. They know what's coming. Let's see if River Valley can adjust. Under three at 257. Ball on the far side, hash to the left side. Township goes shotgun this time. Three men to the right. Updike drops back. Quarterback keep design, and he's got some pressure. He's brought down in the backfield, and first to get to him is number 18, Sean Shirley, the senior defensive back. Good read that time by Sean. Had his eyes square on the quarterback update, and that was a design run by the Connemouth Township quarterback. Shirley was there. No gain on the play. Well, that's going to be a loss because he yep. was ahead of the, the line of scrimmage. Loss of six. Um, get Sean Shirley's stat in there. Back to the 45. Third and 14, back in their own territory. Mm -hmm. Updike this time goes back under center, three men behind him. Maybe a run by design here. Two minutes to play in the first quarter. We're moving along, it's scoreless. And play action, he rolls left. He's got some pressure at the halfback screen and just out in front of his intended target. That being number 23, Liam Richardson, and that'll bring up a fourth down for Connemaw Township. Again, the Connemaw Township receiver was open, but the pass from Updike, a little bit off target. He's now one for three in passing in this first period. And they will punt. Back to return, Dom Spiel. They sent two people back last time, and now Spiel, the lone person in the back, ready to return this kick. And kicking it. Why can't I find his name? I'm, this is not going too well to start off. High snap, and the punter thought about running with it. Defense adjusts, and the ball continues to take a Connemaw Township roll. It dropped it around the 16 and rolls all the way back before being down at the 10-yard line. Let's take 30 seconds. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a penalty flag around the 48. Something tells me it's going to be on River Valley. 
It is a hold on the return team. Yep. So that will send them back. Let's take 30 seconds. Nothing, nothing. Our score, 142 to go in the first quarter on Cat Country 106.3. from you all the way in climber West Shemokin beating Penn's Manor 13 to nothing uh, quarterback Lou Schwartz we know he's going to be lethal he's got two touchdowns already for the, the West Shemokin Wolves and uh, Chuck if I had to pick a dark horse for the Heritage Conference they would be it yeah they're gonna have a good team this year Jake there's no doubt about it coach John McCullough always has a strong strong squad out there and I wonder if they're a timeout yep timeout taken by River Valley uh, we'll keep it right here. I want to tell you that IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is a state-of-the-art facility offering a wide range of specialized departments like Urgicare, which is open seven days a week from 8 to 8. They treat minor illnesses and injuries, so next time you cut your finger or have a little bit of the flu and need some medicine, be sure to visit IRMC at Chestnut Ridge just off Old Route 22 next to the Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort and Conference Center in Blairsville. Get in, get out, and get better. And we we'll welcome you back to our ST Bank broadcast booth. ST Bank People Forward Banking alongside Chuck Clark, Jake Slobodnik joining you. Scoreless affair, the minute 42 left to go in the first quarter. River Valley, though, deep in their own territory at the five yard line after a hold on, I believe, Don Bartolini set them back half the distance to the goals. Down to the 10 yard line. Now that sets them back five more yards. And here we go. River Valley offense back out there under the direction of Luke Woodring. He's thrown three, completed one, been picked off once. He goes under center for the first play of this drive. Handoff goes to Gavin Burkhart, treads forward for a couple of yards. Not close to a first, but positive yardage anyway. About uh, four yards on the carry. He's up a second and six. Let you know that River Valley timeout brought to you by our friends at Luxembourg's Jewelers. Stop by one of their two locations along Philadelphia Street or the Indiana Mall. Shotgun set after the four-yard gain. And the handoff now goes to Quinn Whitmer. He gets the first down and a couple more yards. Brought down shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. So mark that up a 12-yard carry for Quinn Whitmer. Good run, but what made that run was the blocking by the interior of the River Valley offensive line. That's another River Valley first down, and our first downs all season long brought to you by InFirst Bank. Check out InFirst Bank's rewards checking today. So after the fresh set of downs, River Valley back out on offense, creating a little bit of space from their own end zone. Woodring goes under center. He's got two men behind him, a wide out to each side. Woodring will hand off to Burkhardt. He'll take it to the right side. Stiff arms a man. He's going to make forward progress. And he's finally brought down at around the 24-yard line. So mark that about a five-yard carry as the seconds tick down 29 to go here in the first quarter. That brings up a second and five for River Valley. And we'll see if they try to get one off. 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. 10 seconds, I don't think they're going to try to get another playoff. And nope, Woodring looks at the clock and says, hey, we'll just take it into the second quarter. And that's it. That's our first quarter brought to you by friends of Jim Struzzi. Time to make to the switch to the second quarter from Salzburg. It's River Valley nothing, Connemaw Township nothing on an IRMC High School Sports Night, Cat Country 106.3. Ready for the second quarter from Salzburg. Scoreless between Connemaw Valley and River Valley. Panthers will have the ball going left to right this time after the quarter switch. They have it second and five at their own 23 on the right hash. Woodring in the new quarter takes it. Nice pitch back to, I believe that's Caden Barnhart. No, that's Quint Whitmer, and he powers forward for the first down. Get needed five, he got about eight. Oh, Quint Whitmer really starting to make a name for himself here on this next drive for River Valley. 
And that's a first down brought to you by InFirst Bank. Check out InFirst Bank's rewards checking today. Well, Chuck, a very fast-paced first quarter. A couple errors by both teams, but overall, uh, it's been pretty good so far. Total offense in that first period for River Valley, 46 yards. And for Conneville Township, 28. Got some score updates from you for around the Heritage Conference. Last week's heard, uh, West Shemokin beating Penn's Manor 13 to nothing, thanks to two touchdowns by Lou Schwartz. And purchase line, Cambria Heights scoreless at the end of one. First and 10 at the 32 at the 11 and a half mark here in the first half. Woodring hands off to the fullback. That's to Caden Barnhart this time. And the entire defense will swarm him, but not after a five to six yard gain. I think he might have got seven actually. That's one of the areas that the Panthers must improve from last season. And so far tonight, they've done a pretty good job of that. Opening up the holes, letting those running backs run to daylight. Second and three now for the Panthers after the big run by Caden Barnhart. Took the entire defensive unit to bring him down. Under center, Woodring. Little screen pass out to the right. It's Dom Spiel. He makes the catch. Stumbles a bit, but he stays on his feet enough to get the first down, and he's brought down at around the 47. He needed about three and got about nine. Dom Spiel's going to be one of their keys to their offense this year. Was one of their top receivers last year. 19 catches. That is another first down brought to you by InFirst Bank. Yeah, Dom Spiel, I mean, we talked to Jeff's, uh, Coach Jess Hauser throughout the offseason. The one thing he mentioned is that Dom just seemed to be getting better. And I know that's pretty uh, that's pretty much a blanket statement, but, you know, just took what he did last year because he was good last year and just started growing on it. So, well, here we go. Fresh set of downs. First and 10 at the 46. Woodring seemed like a broken play, but he pitches it back. And Burkhardt loses it, and it's recovered by Connemaw Township. Whoop. Another turnover for River Valley. Unbelievable. It, it was a pitch back play to Burkhardt as he was going to the left, and he just could not keep a solid grip. Now, well, another turnover. It's the second time, second straight offensive drive that River Valley uh, coughs up the ball. And now Connemaw Township takes over at the River Valley 41, 10 12 to go in the second. And you don't want to put the defense in this type of position. They have it at your 41-yard line. Yeah, especially when Connemaw Township seemed to be figuring things out on offense last time around. Updike and his running crew was just, they were unstoppable until they had, uh, they had a setback and a penalty and couldn't get back to that first down marker. But either way, they take over in Panther territory. First time today they set up shop in River Valley's side of the field. Updike and shotgun set, trips to the right, sends a man in motion from right to left. It's a jet sweep, and it's snuffed out easily by the River Valley defense. And getting back there in time, Noah Ripple, the junior defensive lineman. Good penetration by that defense once again. This time, Noah Ripple. Junior, 5'10", 215 pounder. Sets him back a couple of yards. They actually gave him a loss of three. So now second and 13. Ball in the River Valley, 44, in between both hash marks. Updike drops back the pass. He's going to gun it deep, and he's got two defenders there, but it's over everybody. The intended target was number 10, uh, Dominic Bambino, and in coverage was his counterpart, Luke Woodring, and Dom Spiel. Well, there's no doubt that Updike can throw the football. He hasn't been very accurate, just one of four. But he's got that arm strength. He does Sometimes have Sometimes that's all you need. But I still think you're going to have to watch out for his running ability. No, we've seen that already so far tonight. Third and long, third and 13 at the 44. Trips to the left. Yeah, they completely flip it this time. And shotgun set sidecar to Updike's left. He drops back, looking to pass the second straight time. He's got some pressure. Running right, booting, and he's hit and brought down aggressively near the sideline. That by number 17, Nico Vidala, the senior linebacker. He sacks him in the backfield for a loss. And it looked like if Updike couldn't have found a receiver, he would have went off to the races. Nico Vidala, I'll tell you what, he just trailed him and caught up to him last time, and there was nothing Updike could do. He had no receivers open. Probably could have just took it right out of bounds, but... Vidala's speed just caught up to him. That brings up a fourth and 18. And Spiel back to return the punt. 
Mozzie back to punt. He does so. Decent kick. Spiel will let it hop in. Head out of bounds at around the three-yard line, it looks like. No, they're going to say at the 10-yard line. Well, Chuck, another big stop for the River Valley uh, defense after that turnover. It seems like the defense has things put together, whereas the offense looking a little shaky to start things off. They have played a strong first half so far, and uh, the Panthers have had two potential scoring drives stop, one by an interception and one by a fumble. So, so they the take Panthers up will the, get it. Yep, at their own 10, going left to right. Ball placed in between both hash marks. River Valley in their... Blue tops, black pants, and black and blue helmets. Back out for their third offensive drive. Woodring will start this under center. One wide out to each side. Sends Spiel in motion from right to left. Takes a snap. It's a pitch back to Sam Yanitz. He turns on the Jets. A couple yards. He breaks through. Gets the first. And look at him go. He's down all the way to the 27-yard line. 17-yard rush by Sam Yanitz. That is what we saw last year from it him. It was John Updike, the defensive back, last man between Yanitz and the end zone, who made the tackle. First down, Panthers. And this first down brought to you by In First Bank. Check out In First Bank's rewards checking today. Gain of 17. So here we go. Spiel wide out to the right. And it looks like Caden Brezilovic on the far side. Can't make up the number, but that looks like his stature. Woodering under center, hands it off to the fullback in Whitmer. He powers forward, close to a first. He might have gotten it. If not, he's just a mere inch shy of it. Yeah, I think he's going to be a little bit short. No, they're going to oh. give him the first down, a 10-yard rush by Whitmer. Another in first bank first down. Back-to-back -back rushes of double digits. And River Valley, two running plays, and they've all they've taken it all the way from the 10 all the way to the 37. 7.40 to go in the first half. Nothing, nothing. Our score between Conema Township and River Valley. Township, the newcomer to the Heritage Conference. Second straight season, River Valley opens its season against a new face. And now on first down, another pitch play to the right, and another loose ball, but Sam Yanitz falls on top of it. You know, Chuck, call me crazy, but I think Whoa. River Valley might want to Think of something else aside from one of those pitch plays. Yeah. That's now twice. Another time that could have been a turnover. That's going to lose yardage. That's going to be an incomplete. I thought it was a forward pass. Oh, it's okay. So, yep. they, so they get a break there. I'll say so. And Woodring now two out of five. So here we go. After the incomplete, second and ten for River Valley. Ball in between both hash marks at the 37. They're on their own territory. Woodring hands it off to Yanitz, ooh, and he's ooh. snuffed out in the backfield almost immediately, and he's brought down by number one, Luke Weber, the junior linebacker, standing 5'10 for Conoma Township. So that'll bring up a third and long, third and possibly 13. And there was nothing Sam could do there. That was nope. just good defensive play by the uh, Conoma Township Indians. They drew up the defensive scheme perfect to stop that rush. Third and 13, 6.42 to go in the second quarter, scoreless. Woodring under center, one wide out to each side, running back behind him. Drops back, boots right, senses some pressure. Turn it on the Jets, trying to get rid of the ball, finds some open space. Jukes left, he's back to the line of scrimmage, and he might have gotten a yard. So what looked doom and gloom at first turns into at least some positive yardage, but not enough. And River Valley will be forced to punt it away. And uh, we'll see here now. One person checks off. Six minutes to play. Timeout. Uh, yep, timeout for River Valley. We'll take a timeout with them. 5.50 to go in the second quarter. Scoreless from Salzburg on Cat Country 106.3, catcountry1063fm.com. Both teams still in their huddles on this timeout, brought to you by Luxembourg's Jewelers. It's their brought to you, or all timeouts this season, brought to you by Luxembourg. Stop by one of their two locations along Philadelphia Streets, 
for the Indiana Mall. And a uh, pretty cool thing we got going on here with the second quarter. Uh, when we come in from breaks, we got some of the River Valley Stars to uh, voice some liners for us. So a little new things, a couple new things this year to our broadcast. So be listening for your favorite player. Who's my favorite player? Who's ever doing the liners? <laughs> 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 Five fifty to go in the second, fourth and nine. River Valley will be forced to punt it away. They made great prog pro progression down the field. They started at their own ten, moved down to the thirty-nine, and a nice punt by Brad McDivitt, and it continues to roll. It's picked up by Connemaw Township around their 10, moving forward, so down from the 10, and there's a flag on the play. Domsfield bringing him down, possibly a loose ball, some shoving after the play. Runner was brought down at around the 20. There is laundry. Let's see what this is. Normally, on a punt, this is a penalty on the return team, but you never know. First picked up at the 10-yard line. They still have not indicated what the penalty is. The flag's still on the field. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, Jess Hauser is a couple yards onto the field near the 50 on the <laughs> midfield. I guess he's just trying to figure out what's well, going on here. So is the Conowa Valley coach. <laughs> no indication by any of the officials. There are three of them are in a meeting in a conference, and there are two penalty markers, we understand. Maybe a – oh, there is. Oh, yeah, there was one by the River Valley 41. Two penalties on the play. Here we go. Here's the call. On Sportsmanlike on River Valley. And Pushing block in the back, back on Connemaw Township. They offset? Yep, they offset. Um, they're going to replay fourth down here. All right. Oh, that's, that's, that's a shame because that was a good punt by McDivitt. It, it traveled a long distance, and then it took a nice River Valley hop. Maybe you can get a better one off this time. Maybe. It made it down to the Connemaw Township 10 last time. So here we go, McDivitt back out. A couple new special teams faces this year. Uh, we see McDivitt as the punter for River Valley last year. I'm not mistaken, wasn't it Bahanna last year or was it somebody else? Well, Bahanna was the place kicker. Oh, that's right, and Cole Hackathorn assumes that duty this year. So here we go again after the offsetting penalties. Fourth and ninth, 39, 539 to play in the second quarter. McDivitt back to punt. Updike back to return for Connemaw Township. Snap, the kick, it is a low one. And it does not take as dramatic of a hop. And it's down by River Valley at around the 23-yard line. All decent punt, and Connemaw Township sets up mid-range in their own territory. And uh, we'll see exactly where they would mark this. They don't have the individual yardages no. out there, so we're just guesstimating here. And but, again, uh, no, snap, no snap clock. And set it up at their own 24, 24 okay. yard behind yeah. that. And folks, just a reminder, yeah. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is a state-of-the-art facility offering a wide range of specialized departments like Urgent Care, open seven days a week from 8 to 8. They treat minor illnesses and injuries, so when the need fits, visit IRMC at Chestnut Ridge off Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Get in, get out, Dan, get better. Another offensive drive for Conemaw Township in a scoreless ball game. Five and a half to play until the halftime intermission. Updike, Calvary to his left, takes it on a good design quarterback keep. Yanitz giving chase. And it looked like Woodring shoved Yanitz into Updike to push him out of bounds. That was a mighty shot, but it does the job. It's only a couple yard gain for uh, Updike. Well, you can tell when Updike runs the football, he's looking downfield for a hole somewhere. And there was no place for him to go but out of bounds. See what they give him here. I think maybe five. Five, yeah. Yep, five yards. Score update from Clymer. Penn's Manor has now trimmed the deficit to seven. They trail 13-6 to the West Shemokin Wolves. Under center, Updike. Men behind him. He takes a snap, hands it off. This one Ooh. takes a punishing blow. That's number 23. I know we've had him before. Here we go, Liam Richardson. And Brody Stuller with a head-to-head -head tackle. <laughs> Looks yeah, like a shoulder-to-shoulder. -shoulder. Might have got, well, he got four on that, so that'll bring up a third and one. Only need a yard to move the sticks. Let's see if they can do it here. Third down. Now Updike goes in shotgun set. He's got three men to his left. Updike drops back, another design quarterback keep, and the defense right there. He did not go anywhere. River Valley, another big stop in late defensive mode. 
Wow. Sean Shirley on the stop. And Stuller there as well. And here comes fourth and one. And it looks like Conwell Township's going to keep the offense out there. And why not? It's a short yardage situation. Fourth and one at the 33. Ball on the left hash. Clock continues to roll 335. River Valley only down to one timeout, whereas Conwell Township has all three. So here we go. Big fourth down coming up. Fourth and one for Conwell Township. Scoreless ball game, 3.20 to go in the second quarter. Up Dyke, draws the defense oh, offside. It. Come on. it worked. Come on. And the hometown sport is not too thrilled about that. Well, yeah, you can't give a free first down, and they just did. But either way, whether it's earned or it's given, they're presented by In First Bank. Check out their checking rewards today. So first and 10 from the 33, clock continuing the roll of three minutes. And now Updike and shotgun set, sidecars to his right. He's got three of them. He drops back. It's a handoff, this time to Statler. And he's hit hard after making forward progress and another punishing blow, and he's finally brought down after about a five-yard gain. Barnhart on the stop. Brings up a second and five. Clock continuing to roll. Two and a half to play in the half. Folks, don't forget you miss any of the action tonight. Catch up on all the Heritage Conference action, including River Valley and Connemaw Township tomorrow morning, 8 to 10 a.m. Coach's Corner, presented by Luther Ford Lincoln and Homer City, 8 to 10 on our sister station, WDAD. Updike under center, second and six. They only gave him four. Updike boots right, looking to pass. He throws it on the run. Who's he throwing it to? And it's caught on the run by number one. That is caught by Luke Weber, and he's into Panther territory. He had to go behind his back to haul that in. Woodring was on the coverage, but he yeah. dove, and that's what let Weber sort of regroup. Well, Weber had a defender in front of him, one right on his back, and he took one step to get out of that coverage, make the catch, only the second completion for Updike, but it puts the ball down at the Panther 22-yard line. So now, first and 10, Updike on the quarterback keep, runs left. He's met in the backfield. He'll lose a yard or two. And Joey Bedick right there to help bring him down. Brad McDivitt also helping on that stop. Brings up a second and 11 after the one yard loss. Minute left. Connemaw Township has not taken a timeout yet. They still have all three, so they could stop the clock, and I'm sure they will here. Well, it's interesting. Uh, yes, they do, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that thought okay. here in just a second, Chuck, but we'll take a timeout. 55 seconds to go in the first half. Connemaw Township making quick progress up the field. We'll see how this turns out after this. Luxembourg Jewelers are presenting sponsor for all timeouts here on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. Timeout, Updike eludes some pressure, and he runs it down the left side of the field before running out of bounds. I don't think he got the first down, but boy, that could have been a lot worse for Connemaw Township off the timeout. I was going to mention, Jake, before that timeout, uh, River Valley had their freshman quarterback, Mac Perchetti, warming up on the sideline here behind the bench, so I don't know if they're thinking about making a change at quarterback their next offensive series. We'll wait and see. Yeah, I mean, if they can get it, I don't know. That's It's hard to predict here, especially in week one. You don't know what's going to happen. Third and three after the eight-yard carry by Updike. Yeah. 
47 seconds left to play. Scoreless first half. Both teams have made good strides to get down the field, but a couple of errors have gotten in their way. Updike and shotgun set, takes a snap, rolling right, looking to pass. It's a halfback screen. He gets it to him. That's Statler, and he gets the first down, and it'll be first and goal for Connemaw Township. About a five-yard reception. Now the closest River Valley has been to the end zone, the Connemaw Township 11-yard line. This is the closest the Indians have been to the Panthers' end zone. First downs all season long brought to you by In First Bank. Check out In First Bank's rewards checking today. 35 seconds to go in the half. They're at the 10. River Valley will get the opening kick to start the second quarter, or the second half, excuse me. Clock continues to roll 26 seconds. Clock stop momentarily for them to move the chains. Updike, shotgun set, sidecar to his left, double wide to the left. He takes it, design quarterback keep, rushes up the middle. A couple yards of running room. He's down to about the three, seven-yard rush. Barnhart and Wayno in there on the stop, and we will have a timeout taken by Connemaw Township. We'll take 30 seconds of it. Scoreless, but Connemaw Township about three yards away from opening the game, scoring late with 14 seconds in the second quarter on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. Sun starting to set here at Salzburg. 14 seconds left in the second quarter. Scoreless, but Connemaw Township just three yards away from their first touchdown with the Heritage Conference. They have one timeout. So does River Valley. We'll see what they do. Updike and shotgun set. Takes it. Quarterback keep running to the left. He's met with some defenders. He reaches across the goal line. Touchdown, Connemaw Township. Three-yard rush by Updike, and that leaves nine seconds to spare. Well, I told you Updike was going to play an important part with his running ability, and he just put the first points on the board. Oh, well, River Valley held them in check all the way up until this point. And this goes to show turnovers will cost you because River Valley has had two, and this is what happens. You fall behind late in the game or late in the first half, early in the game, whichever way you look at it. Jackson Satoski out for the extra point attempt. Snap, the hold, the kick on its way. It's a low one, but it is good. Nine seconds to go in the second quarter. Connemaw Township, their first touchdown in the Heritage Conference at 7-0 Indians on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. Satoski tees it up, will kick right to left following the Connemaw Township scoring drive. And points all season long brought to you by Grand Beginnings Children's Center. We'll tell you why they present each point scored here in just a moment. Satoski tees it off. A little squib kick in the middle of the field. And it's picked up by, I believe that's Dom Spiel on the far side. Finds a little bit of running room, gets through the middle, and he's wide open in front of him, but he's finally brought down at around the 35-yard line with one second to spare. Wow, he picked that up at around the, his own 18-yard line and just continued carrying it. It was man-to-man -to, -man to the end zone. Unfortunately, oh. the defensive man caught him. If he didn't take that stutter step to Juke right, he would have been gone to the house. But there's one second on the clock. Wood Woodring has one second to heave it toward the end zone. Let me ask you, Jake, do we have a summary sponsor? Um, drive sponsor or drive summaries? Yes, by Luther Ford Lincoln, okay. if you want to get to that. Well, it was a 75-yard drive. John Updike, the quarterback, took it in from three yards out. The PAT, 7-0, Connemaw Township. From the 33, one play left. Woodring drops back to pass. It's a little screen pass to Spiel on the right. Heading to the opposite side of the field, turning on the Jets. He's gobbled up. He's trying to lateral it, and he can't. It would have been a first down, but that'll bring to the end, an end of the first quarter, or the first half. And uh, River, it ends on a completion from Woodring to Spiel. Went from the 33 all the way down to, I believe that would have been at the... Um, 
Yeah, the 20 13. yard line. Yeah, 13 so, yards. Yep, 13 yards. That ends the first half. And our Indiana Total Therapy halftime report is next. At the end of one half, it's Conomaw Township 7, River Valley nothing on an IRMC High School Sports Night. It's Cat Country 1063 and Cat Country 1063FM.com. Indiana Total Therapy halftime report brought to you by Indiana Total Therapy. 7 to nothing. our score, low-scoring affair between River Valley and Conema Township. The Indians with a lone touchdown. They scored that right before the uh, end of the second quarter. Chuck, initial thoughts from the first half. Well, two key mistakes for River Valley. They had two turnovers, one an interception that halted a drive at the Conema Township 11-yard line, and the second one, uh, they lost a fumble. That was at the Conema Township 46. So they have to cut down on those mistakes. If we want to take a look at total yardage for the Panthers in that first half, 129 yards for Conema Township, 109 yards. One of the big things for me I think that I noticed was that uh, Conema Township, once they started establishing some rhythm with their run game, especially on the, foot, the feet of uh, John Updike, that's when they really turned up the intensity and started uh, picking apart the flaws in River Valley's defense. And it looks like Updike is a little hesitant. Remember last year he was one of their top runners. A little hesitant to run the football. He sort of looks for an opening to hit. I think if he just puts his head down and drives forward, he's going to have a big second half. Well, we'll see what they do. And uh, we'll have more for you as our Indiana Total Therapy halftime report continues. And uh, just big thing, let's do a full recap. Uh, Conema Township. Started off with the ball at their own 28 at the 15-minute mark in the opening minutes of the first. Uh, they went four and out, uh, three and out. They they had lost yardage. They lost about as much as eight and then got 15 of that back but were forced to punt on fourth and three. River Valley in their first possession, they drove down, as Chuck said, to the Connemaw Township 11. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plays. Picked off in the end zone, John Updike on the interception of Luke Woodring. And they set up shop at their own 20. They trudged forward for a couple of yards, but were forced to punt on fourth down. River Valley took over at their own five following a block in the back penalty by Don Bartolini on the punt return. And they made some great progress, taking it throughout the end of the first quarter. And if I'm not mistaken, they made it into Connemaw Township territory. But uh, that was when that aforementioned fumble happened. And uh, it was just one of those bobbled balls that uh, couldn't be followed on by River Valley. Connemaw Township then took it at their own at the River Valley 41. First time in the game they set up shop in enemy territory at 10.42 left in the second quarter. They went three and out. River Valley took it, got a first down on the first play thanks to a 17-yard rush by Sam Yanitz. They replicated a 10-yard rush for a, another first down. Um, then an incomplete pass, small yardage, uh, rush that is, and then River Valley forced to punt. Then came the scoring drive for Connemaw Township, 10 plays, 75 yards, and it ended with a three-yard touchdown rush by uh, John Updike, an extra point made it seven to nothing. River Valley, they had a good return on the kickoff. They took it down to the 33 of Connemaw Township and Luke Woodring on his final chance before the halftime intermission. Thought about chucking it to the end zone. Instead, he went to the right with Dom Spiel. Uh, just about a half second behind. If he would have been out in front a little bit more, he would have been gone to the end zone or at least closer to it. And that leaves us seven to nothing, our score after the first half. We'll take a timeout. More of our Indiana Total Therapy report coming up next. We're going to have our senior spotlight. We're doing something new this year with our halftime report. We're going to showcase the seniors of River Valley. Now, for the first eight weeks, we got about two apiece, and then week nine we'll have one. Uh, that's just how things panned out. So this week we got Micah Griffith and Caden Barnhart. That's all coming up after this timeout. We'll have a look at stats before the start of the second half. More of our Indiana Total Therapy pregame or halftime report continues with our senior spotlight next on Cat Country 106.3, catcountry1063fm.com. And welcome you back into the Indiana Total Therapy Halftime Report. 7-0 at the half. Connemaw Township leading River Valley in Salzburg. Take a look at first half stats. We'll start with individual stats. Both uh, passers today, John Updike for Connemaw Township and Luke Woodring for River Valley, both 3 of 6. Woodring with 43 yards and an interception. Updike, 68 yards passing. Big thing has been rushing. He's got 28 yards on the ground and a touchdown. 
Uh, rushing leaders, aside from Updike, Gavin Burkhart, 19 yards for River Valley. Quint Whitmer leading the rushing tab for uh, River Valley. Three yards, uh, three rushes on 30 carries. Uh, he's had two of 10 or more yards. And uh, for Conema Township, just let me clarify the name real quick. It's the one bad thing about dealing with new teams is you don't want to get the names wrong. Dawson Statler leading rusher for them. Five rushes and 11 yards, one reception for five yards as well. Chuck, you got a uh, total yardage? Uh, total yardage for the River Valley Panthers in that first half, 129. And for Conemaw Township, 109. But again, uh, the one stat that coaches don't want to see you lead in is turnovers. Yep. Two for the Panthers. One was an interception at the Indians 11, and the other one was a fumble at their 43-yard uh, line. So both those turnovers cost them. We'll see if they can clean that up. Come on, put some points on the board in the second half. River Valley will return the opening kick for the second half. And we'll also have some more commentary and more uh, scores from around the Heritage Conference and even Indiana High. That has been our Indiana Total Therapy Halftime Report. Third quarter of action presented by Friends of Shireen Hess is on the way. This is an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Conema Township leading River Valley 7-0 to nothing to t after 2 on Cat Country 106.3. Welcome you back inside the ST Bank broadcast booth. ST Bank People Forward Banking getting ready for the third quarter of action presented by friends of Shireen Hess. Before we get to the third quarter, we got a couple things we got to want to take care of. First of all, want to thank our friends over at Point Street Tavern in Salzburg. Just a, a hop, skip, and a jump away from uh, the Steam Academy here in Salzburg for feeding our Cat Country crew tonight. Chuck and I had the opportunity to sample two of their finest sandwiches, the Martin and the Mule. Now, the Martin, if I'm not mistaken, Chuck, was like a turkey sandwich with. Um, I think there was red onions on it, mm -hmm. some cheddar cheese, I, I, maybe some spinach as well. Yes. And uh, I think you had a couple of bites of that Very mule. Good. I haven't had a chance of it. Uh, overall, your thoughts on the sandwiches? Well, I, for me, I prefer the Martin, but they were both <laughs> very good. Yeah, they were. You can't There's, go wrong. Yeah, so we thank our friends over at Point Street Tavern, Gary and his crew, for feeding us here tonight and keeping us energized so we can bring this game to you. Scores from around the Heritage Conference, and uh, we'll start with Climber. With three minutes left in the, in the first half, last we heard, 27-12, to 12, West Shemokin pounding the Pens Manor Comets. And uh, we kind of knew that was going to happen because the Comets, they lost a lot of assets from last year, whereas West Shemokin seemed to just get stronger. Um, at the half in, I believe, I, can, I think it's uh, Patton tonight, uh, purchase line leading Cambry Heights 7 to nothing. That's a surprise there. Um, oh, we have a halftime score from Pens Manor. My apologies. 34-18 at the half. Uh, Homer Center, oh, they're at Marion Center tonight, and the Stingers leading the Wildcats 7-6. to six. Travis Williams, Ward Hilliard have the call on that game over on our sister station, WCCS, and on Renda Digital TV. And we got some WBIAL football up to update you on. The Indiana Little Indians opening their season at Andy Kuzneski Field, a 13-0 halftime lead over Freeport tonight, and uh, that game on our sister station, WDAD and Renda Digital TV. Haven't heard anything from our U92 game of the week, which is uh, an exciting one. Defending District 6 champion Northern Cambria against uh, preseason favorite United Valley. How about that, mm -hmm. Chuck? United yeah. Valley tabbed as the preseason favorite among Heritage Conference coaches. There's some talent on there. There is, and they just seem to get stronger. I don't think they lost many players from last year, maybe a couple, but wow, just, that's just amazing. Six first place votes at our Heritage Conference media day for the Lions. And... Uh, that is some interesting stuff there. Let's remind our Panther fans, next Friday night we'll be at Purchase Line as River Valley takes on the Red Dragons. And then in two weeks, on Friday night, September 8th, back here at Salzburg to host the Homer Center Wildcats. And uh, that game will be aired on WCCS, simulcasted on Cat Country 106.3. And we'll also have that for you on our live stream on Renda Digital TV. Ready for the second half kickoff brought to you by Grand Beginnings Children's Center. Get your children ready to shine at Grand Beginnings Children's Center. We didn't mention it. This is my fault. Uh, but with all the points scored tonight, so only seven so far, mm -hmm. uh, Grand Beginnings will add to the Teddy Bear Fun Drive. Throughout the season, Grand Beginnings will add a dollar for every point scored in all of our high school games. 
and uh, they get ready to, they get children ready to shine and help a great cause, the Teddy Bear Fund Drive. So we thank them for helping that out and helping to present high school football here tonight. And our second half kickoff, our opening kickoff as well. Uh, one of our new clients, and they've done a really good job. A couple, one of the unique things they've done is they've brought in a couple of uh, a couple of their classes, and they recorded some Pledge of Allegiance that will air on our radio station. So um, they're 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 involved in a lot this year. And uh, Ted Maseko, the sales executive for Renda Media, who helped uh, bring Grand Beginnings into our home, uh, did a great job with that. And uh, so they've, they've been a big help tonight. Before we get underway with our uh, third quarter of action presented by friends of Shereen Hess, want to let you know that if you're sick, injured, minor injury, minor illness, uh, be sure to head out to IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, just off Old Route 22 in Blairsville. It's a state-of-the-art facility offering such uh, so many specialized departments. I can't list them all in the time that we have. Uh, but one is urgent care. It's open seven days a week from 8 till 8 for the treatment of minor illnesses and injuries. So when the need fits, check them out next to the Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort and Conference Center in Blairsville, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge. Get in, get out, and get better. And we're ready for the third quarter of action. Satoski will kick off for Connemaw Township. Dom Spiel and Sam Yannitz back deep to return this. They will start off with the ball here in the third quarter, and they cannot accept anything less than a scoring drive. Panthers will be operating right to left for this half. Satoski. Approaches the ball and boots it away. It's a nice kick. Heading back is Yenitz, taking a couple steps back. Catches it at the three-yard line. He brings it out. Looking for a hole up the middle. He finds some running room. He finds some real estate. He's at the 45, the 50, and he's brought down in enemy territory at the 48. A 45-yard kick return by Sam Yenitz. That's what you like to see if your head coach, Jess Hauser, get into Connemont Township territory on that opening kickoff. And that will put them up at the Connemaw Township 48-yard line. First and 10 in enemy territory. That's a good tone to set for River Valley. Not a lot going their way so far this game, but they're only down seven points, and that coming at the final seconds of the second quarter. Luke Woodring, three of six passing the first half. Back out under center. He's got two men behind him, a wide out to each side from the 48, he pitches it back to Sam Yenitz, almost stumbled, gets a nice block by Quinn Whitmer and he finds some running room and he's brought down at the 29 yard line. Maybe the 28, yeah, they're gonna say 28, a 20 yard carry by Sammy. So he has that big kick return and thanks to a great block by Quinn Whitmer in front of him, he gets a 20 yard carry. That's the way to back it up and package two big offensive plays together. First and 10 now from the Indians, 28. First downs all season long brought to you by In First Bank, check out in First Bank's rewards checking today. If you're just tuning in, Jake Slobodnik alongside Chuck Clark in our ST Bank broadcast booth bringing you tonight's week one coverage of Heritage Conference Football 2023 River Valley, Connemaw Township. River Valley after a big first down rush by Yanitz. Woodring goes under center, same looks before, pitch back to Yanitz. Why not? They're going to go with him. He gets a couple of blocks. Sheds a tackle, moves forward, stopped just before the chains, but that'll go at least for nine yards, maybe eight. And it'll go be an eight-yard rush. Well, there's no doubt that this game is going to be won or lost by that offensive line for the River Valley Panthers. Right now, they're doing their job on this opening drive of the second half. Yanitz will check off, and I believe Bar uh, Burkhart comes in. 10-37 and counting in the third quarter. Ball placed on the right hash at the 20-yard line of Connemaw Township. Woodring hands off to Burkhart. More power in the backfield. He bulldozes forward for the first down and a little bit more. It'll be a first down after the second and one carry. Updike there to stop him. He's been doing pretty much everything yeah. for those Indians today. Eight yard carry by Burkhart. Finished just 11 yards. First half, your first Commonwealth quick stats. Not wasting any time. You go right back to Burkhart this time on the left side, and he's gobbled up after about a one to two yard rush. At the 10 minute mark, they're going to say he gave him, uh, he, got, he got one yard on that rush, so it'll bring up a second and nine ball on the Connemaw Township 10. Now, well, this is a drive that River Valley must put points on the board. From the 10, it's second and nine. 9.38 and counting in the third quarter, presented by friends of Shereen Hess. Woodring goes under center. Men behind him, 
It's a handoff. No, it's an option play. Woodring guns it to the left. He's at the five. Stiff arms a man, dives forward. Touchdown, River Valley. Luke Woodring stayed on his feet just long enough to get it across the goal line. And barring an extra point, we could be tied. There you go, a perfect drive from the kick return to the last play. Cole Hackathorn, his first attempt at an extra point this season, looking to nod the game up at seven. We'll see what he does. So, Woodring will go up and talk to Quint Whitmer. He kneels down, Hackathorn lining up his shot. Snap, the hold, the kick, everything looks good so far. The kick is up. It is good. This game's tied at 7, 9.24 to go in the third quarter, presented by friends of Shereen Hess. We'll have the scoring drive for you next here on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. On Cat Country 106.3. Brand new ball game in Salzburg after the 10-yard rushing touchdown by Luke Woodring. And before we get this kickoff underway, here's Chuck Clark with a drive summary. Nice drive to open up the quarter. Five plays, 48 yards. And like we saw, Updike, the quarterback of the Indian score, it was Panther quarterback Luke Woodring taking it in from 10 yards out with a point after kick. We're tied at 7-7, 9.24 to play, third quarter. And, Chuck, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention how that scoring drive was set up. A 45-yard kick return by Sammy Annitz. He follows it up with a 20-yard rush, then an 8. Gavin Burkhart, 9 yards between two carries, and that sets up the touchdown by Woodring. And the extra point by Cole Hackathorn adds a cherry on top. Speaking of, Cole lines it up at the tee, approaches it, boots it away. It's a squib kick. And it's going to be picked up by Connemont Township at around the 22. That one picked up by Bambino, and he's gobbled up in the back. That's Sam Ewing able to bring him down at around the 23. And we have an injury on the field. And somebody is grabbing their left side. Um, not, I can't see the number on it. Either way, that's going to set up shop for Connemont Township. With 9.19 to play. Third quarter tonight brought to you by friends of Shireen Hess. Get the five. Chuck, are you getting a number on that? Not yet, because he's face down. The River Valley trainer attending to him. Coach Hauser also out there. Got a number. It's number 81, Micah Griffith. Uh, he's okay. still down. He was grabbing his side. Coach Jess Hauser and the trainer out there with him. Griffith in his senior campaign, hopefully it's not too serious. Uh, I don't want to be shelved week one for a season in your final no. year. It's such a shame, too, because we did air Micah Griffith on his uh, senior spotlight just moments ago. Um, again, he was gripping his side, not too sure. Still tending to him on the field. Let's get you up to date with what's going on around the Heritage Conference if you're just tuning in. West Shemokin leading Penns Manor 34-18 at the half. Homer Center trailing, uh, oh no, they're actually leading Marion Center 7-6. I read that score wrong. 7-0 purchase line leading Cambry Heights at the half. No update from Northern Cambry and United Valley. That's the one matchup we're all trying to get our eyes on. All good news, you hear the cheering. That means Griffith is up. He's walking off. He's grabbing lower back on the left side. Maybe it's his left side. I don't know. He was in among the scrum, but again, it's humid. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very warm out tonight. Maybe a, a stitch on the left side. Who knows? And but either if you, way. If you get the wind knocked out of him, you feel like you're not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good to see him walking off. Yes. Walking off with the athletic trainer. I'm sure he'll get evaluated. We'll see if he's coming back in. 
First and 10 at the 25 for Connemaw Township after the three yard return by Bambino. John Updike, his first look here in the second half, represents the lone points for Connemaw Township. Drops back on a quarterback draw, moves forward, gets positive yardage, and he gets past the chains for first down. That'll be about a 13 yard carry, no, 14. Well, there it is, first play for Connemaw Township. Updike the quarterback, 13 yards, straight ahead. Keep your eyes on number nine. And Updike finished that first half as we take a look at our first Commonwealth quick stats. 28 yards on the ground, that's it. Seemed like a lot more, but he's also got 68 yards yeah. passing, three of six. So he's, he, you know, he likes to help out bit by bit. Not really a ton of splash plays so far, but that could change at any moment. Here we go, first and 10 at the 39 after the 14-yard carry by Updike. And Shotgun said he's got three men to his immediate right. Takes a snap. It's a handoff to Statler, and he's gobbled up in the backfield. And right there to get him, almost with a T.J. Watt celebration, is number 56, <laughs> Michael Wayno, the sophomore linebacker, standing in at 5'8". And he also said Brad McDivitt back there as well. And here we go, second and 12. You know, River Valley has had lots of success getting to that backfield early on tonight. And uh, that was one of the things we didn't know what was going to happen this year, but that linebacker core is as solid as ever this year. Yeah, they seem to be playing pretty well for this first game of the year. 7.50 to go. Tied game at 7. Updike takes a low snap. He hands it off to his left. That's Stadler. He's going to get the first and cross midfield. Barnhart there on the stop. 17-yard carry. And as soon as we say how well the defense is playing, a 17-yard <laughs> run from scrimmage. So now they're in Panther territory. No stranger to that tonight. Seven twenty and counting. Ball at the left hash at the 48 of River Valley. Tie game at 7. Updike takes a snap, looking for running room. He gets a couple of yards, about halfway to the sticks. And again on the sideline, River Valley has freshman Max Perchetti, a quarterback, getting loose and warming up. Second time he's been up tonight. Hmm. I would assume relation to Ava, the star point guard for River Valley, the girls basketball team, state champion, all oh, state runner-up, that is, I apologize. Looking to repeat that this coming season. They have some questions, though, with uh, Abby Pinus and Hannah Artley both gone. But uh, we'll see how they fill it in here at the gridiron. Second and five for Connemaw Township in Panther territory. Takes a snap. Updike trying to find room. He's stopped at the line, and he's going to go nowhere. If not, he might have lost a yard. Don Bartolini and Brad McDivitt back. Clock continues to run at the six minute mark. Connemaw Township's almost near their sideline. They're not really hurrying up. I wonder if they're going to call a timeout. Oh, they're just. Taking River, their time. Yeah, River Valley's defense is already out there. Unless they're going to try maybe like a surprise. Oh, yeah, because here they go. They, they're coming up sprinting at the line, 540 to go. I think there's like four seconds left. Oh, uh, maybe. Go. Updike back to pass. He senses some pressure. He just throws it away to the right side. Incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth down and get into the backfield. Quinn Whitmer and Brad McDivitt hurrying him up for an incomplete pass. Not even sure who was in the vicinity, maybe 33. Either way, it's an incomplete pass. And here comes fourth and five. Well, River Valley would hope they could get another good return no. out of this punt. Nobody's going back to return the kick. Conwell Township's lining up the punt. They're going to have to call a timeout and figure out what's going on here for River Valley. What is going on? Either way, snap and the punt, it's away. 
who's back there? Sean Shirley returns it, and he gets minimal yardage to the 20. That was almost disastrous by River Valley, but it wasn't. They set up shop at their own 20. 5.22 to go in this third quarter of play, tied at seven between River Valley and Connemaw Township. Brings up first and 10. Connemaw Township in their first game under the Heritage Conference umbrella. Connemaw Valley also in action tonight against Portage, who ironically was a newcomer last year. Haven't heard a score from them or from Northern Cambria. Hoping to hear that sometime soon. Either way, first and 10 at the 24 River Valley. Last time out, they scored. Woodring, a quick handoff to Gavin Burkhart. He gets a block, carries it forward for a first down. He's at the 40, and he's brought down, still on his feet, at the 46. 26-yard carry by Gavin Burkhart. And you got to like the way that Gavin got near the sideline at the 35, and instead of going out of bounds, cut it back inside, picked up an extra eight yards. Yeah, he about deked the entire defense, thought that he might have just went out of bounds, but no. And here we go, 5-12, first down, all brought to you by In First Bank this season. Woodring pitches to the right on the delay by Sam Yenitz. He turns on the Jets. Moving forward, gets a block, and Can there's a flag in the backfield. That one's coming back. And I, you know, Sam, Sam was brought down pretty hard. Uh, Might have saw an arm around the neck or even on the face mask. No flag over in that vicinity, but there is one near the line of scrimmage. And it'll be a hold on River Valley. That'll set him yep. back. That is not what you want if you're the Panthers. No. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul clock stop, 5.01. And uh, we'll see the first and 23. Haven't seen Luke Woodring take to the air too much. Rightfully so. He's been picked off once. Quick little give to Gavin Burkhart, the interim fullback. He powers forward, trying to get a couple yards back. He does, about four. Get a few yards back, 53. Now Max Perchetti continues to throw on the River Valley sideline. He would be your number two quarterback. He's a freshman. Clock continuing to run 425 here in the third quarter. Presented by friends of Shireen Hess. Second and 19 gets a couple yards back. They still got a mile to go. Woodring drops back looking for a quick pass. He's got nobody. He boots right, tucks it, runs. He's going to get back to the original line. Powers forward, gets halfway to the sticks. Decent carry for him. About a 14-yard rush by Luke Woodring. Should be out around the 50. I'm going to say third and seven, so a 12-yard carry. Woodring under center, two men behind him, one wide out to each side, third and seven at the four-minute mark. Ball on the far hash of the 48. Yanitz gets the pitch on third down, and he's going to run, try to run between two defenders. Nothing doing, might have lost a yard or two on that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now well, what the Panthers are hoping for here is a good fourth down punt that would pin Kahnema Township deep in their territory, maybe let the defense go to work. No gain on that play. Clock continues to run at 3.30. Woodring in the offense back out there. I would hope they punt this away. I mean, Brad McDivitt has looked good back there trying to boot it away, and no, River Valley's going to go for it. Okay. They're going to empty out the backfield. Trips to the right, doubles to the left. Ball in the near hash at the 49, 48, that is. Clock at three minutes, Woodring. High snap, he's able to corral it. He's looking deep, tucks it, and there's yeah. gonna be a flag for holding. Woodring scrambling to the left, he's gonna get the first, it's not gonna matter. He's down to about the 36 before being brought down, and then a late Whoa. flag, that's gonna be a horse collar. Yeah. 
So what happens here? There was a... The funny thing is, is the horse collar happened in front of the side judge. Yes. But he tossed his flag back and it landed near the 50. <laughs> so there's two flags. One will be a hold. One will be a horse collar. So I would imagine this offsets an all three play. Which would be a break for the Panthers. And here comes the call. Two penalties, we know that. Holding. Holding. River Valley. And then. Well, they didn't motion horse collar, but we know what the call is. And it will offset fourth down once again coming up for the Panthers. Now, if River Valley converts, you got to think Conemaw Township's going to be kicking himself. But, yes. I mean, we've seen the Indians be steadfast on defense. They can hold a team if needed. So, almost like a perfect storm coming up. Fourth and seven from the Panther 48-yard line. And they're going to send McDivitt out to try and boot this one away. And that's smart. You indicate once you're going to go for it on fourth. Defense knows what to expect. And McDivitt looking to pin them deep in their own territory. Don is back to return this for Conoma Township. Cam Dunn, number five, a junior wideout slash defensive back. McDivitt gets it, boots this one away. It's a nice line drive kick and hops to the right side. A couple yards in front. Good for Conoma Township, and it's down at around the 24-yard line. And we have an injury on the field for River Valley. And that looks like McDivitt. I think he might have pulled a hammy. Or a cramp. And one of the two. It's humid out. It's warm, very warm. Second injury for River Valley. We'll take 30 seconds. We'll assess, and we'll tell you. We'll hope to have an update for you after this. It is 7-7, 2.24 to go in the third quarter, presented by Friends of Shereen Hess on an IRMC High School Sports Night, Cat Country 106.3. So alongside McDivitt, there is another Panther down. Well, Luke will... Woodring's been on the sideline for a while now, and they're attending to his leg area. Could be a cramp. Well, the good thing is McDivitt is up and walking along the sideline. So, yeah, again, it's hot. It's yeah. humid. Got to stay hydrated. This is the type of thing that you should expect on a night like tonight. Yep. That's all. You know, you always like whenever it's warm out for a football, but at the same time, it presents uh, its dangers. If and you're this out is there playing. But uh, while they tend to the injured Panther not named Brad McDivitt. We'll give you a couple score updates. We do have a couple scores. United Valley leading Northern Cambria 14-7 at halftime. And Portage trouncing Connemaw Valley 28-7 at half. Uh, that was posted a while ago. Hopefully we get some updates here in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good for Heritage Conference Week 1. Indiana also in the WPIAL leading Freeport 13-0 in the third quarter. And, again, if you miss any of the action tonight, no matter what game you're trying to follow, you can always listen to Coach's Corner, presented by Luther Ford Lincoln and the Luther Family Dealerships every Saturday from 8 to 10 on WDAD and WDADradio.com. Well, the injured Panther is up. That Quinn Whitmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. He's cramped, but he's he's able to hobble off. Meanwhile, Luke Woodring still flat on his back. Oh, wow. And they continue to work on that uh, area below the knee, around the thigh, around the calf area, which could indicate a cramp. But we've been telling you that... Uh, Max Prochetti has been warming up since near the end of the first half. Well, if he's called upon, he's at least ready for it. First and 10 after the timeout, the injury timeout. Conoma Township back to work, operating left to right. John Updike with a car, side car to his right, got trips to the right as well. Looking for a halfback screen, and I don't know what happened, but he just tossed it into no man's land, incomplete. I think he caught his receiver by surprise. He was cutting into the middle of the field. He wasn't really looking for the football. Just updating the old scorebook here. So a second and 10 for the Indians. 
Football at their 24 yard line, 2.20 left in this third quarter, and we're still tied at seven. Late substitution for River Valley. They're able to get them off though. Again, sidecar to the right, trips to the right as well. One wide out to the left. Updike takes a snap, drops back, looking to pass, looking left, scrambles, sensing some danger. He's in the backfield, gets off a throw, and it's blocked at the line. I couldn't see who got their hand on it, but it was a River Valley Panther. Somebody with a big paw. It was number 17, Nico Vidala. Yeah. He's been in on a couple plays. He had a tackle for a loss and now a batted ball. He's doing pretty well tonight. Brings this, up third and ten. This is a big down. If River Valley can hold him here, they'll force Conneball Township to punt. What would help them here is a loss, uh, a negative yardage play on oh, defense. Yeah. They, they need that. Here we go, same look. Trips to the right side guard, Updike's right as well. He snaps, there he goes. tucks it, runs to the left side. Thought about throwing it. He's going to get the first and yep. a little bit more, he and he's gone. He's there he goes. At the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Conemaugh Township. And there's a flag thrown after the play in the back. But, yep, uh, yep well, we talk about River Valley needed a negative yard play. They got probably the farthest thing from that. And I told you, keep your eyes on the quarterback. A little pump fake after he picked up about seven yards, and then he was clear down the far sideline. 76 yards to the house. Let's see if they bring this one back. It's a whole, uh, block in the back. Against Connemont Thompson. Okay. So that'll negate the touchdown. So River Valley can breathe somewhat of a sigh of relief, and Caden Barnhart is pumped up after that penalty call. He was following the far side judge down the field, pleading his case. I don't know if it was for a penalty or for him stepping out, but uh, once they called that penalty, oh, oh boy, he was happy. So this will get marked at the 28-yard line? Uh, yeah, 28. So that saves a touchdown. But again, the running ability of John Updike is going to be a key in this second half. 48-yard rush brings up a first and 10 at the River Valley 28. And we're down to a two-minute warning. In the third quarter, yep. Still, <laughs> it, it feels like we're almost to the end of the game. <laughs> Updike in shotgun set. Two blockers ahead of him on the right. Sidecar to his left. That's Statler. Drops back the pass. Hill's going to tuck it and run. Not fooling anybody. He gets maybe three, three yards before he's finally brought down. And now we have an injured Indian. I wonder if that's Updike. We have a player in our line of sight, so we can't really see. No, that is number 53. I have a name for you here in a second. That is Jake Gregg. He's down, possible cramping as well. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be a two yard rush. Now on his back. Update from Andy Kuzneski Field in Indiana. The Little Indians now with a 20 to nothing lead over Freeport. That's a good tone to set good. for their season. Yes. Crew over at Andy Kuzneski Field bringing that game to you on uh, WDAD and Renda Digital TV. Still haven't heard much. Well, let's check in on the Homer Center game while we have a brief lull in the action. And my phone is on the game. However, I don't see a scorebook. Oh, here we go. Third quarter, 7-6, Homer Center still. Mm -hmm. And as Chuck said earlier, we'll be in Commodore next week for Purchase Line. River Valley Purchase Line airtime with our Indiana Total Therapy pregame is at 6.30 here on Cat Country 106.3. Well, Greg is up, and he's going to need some assistance coming off. So we'll see if he re-enters the game. First time an Indian has gone down tonight. I think that what brings the total of four or five injured players altogether. Right. Most of it has just been cramping from the from the weather. Luke Woodring is up walking around. It's good to see. Mm -hmm. Surprised they don't have a stationary bike on the side. Yeah, they used to. Yeah. For they second used and have, eight. They used to have fans on the sidelines too. Hmm. Second and eight. Field. 
And now we're going to see a new quarterback in for Connemaw Township as Statler gets the handoff, powers forward for a couple of yards in, in the shotgun rather than under center. Is number seven, Sam Schaefer. He's listed as a quarterback and a wide receiver as well as a defensive back. And so they gave him five on the carry, bring up a third and three, Merrick Smith on the tackle. Again, important defensive series here for River Valley. Tied at seven with a minute four to play in the third quarter. They want to keep Conemaugh Valley out of the end zone. Township, that is. Oh, you're right, Township. <laughs> I knew I, I, I was going to do that. Too, I knew I was going to do that. Third and three. Sidecars each side of Updike, who's back in and shotgun set. Double wides to the right. He takes it. Boots right, looking for an open man. He's got a man in his face, and he's going to throw it to the right side. Incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth and three. Merrick Smith in on the face of Updike. Fourth and three coming up. Indians need a er, Indians need a first down. Panthers need a stop. That stops the clock at 41 seconds to go in the third quarter, presented by friends of Shereen Hess. Shereen running for Indiana County Commissioner again. Score update from Purchase Line, or from Cambria Heights, that is. The Highlanders tie it up at 7 with under a minute to go in the third quarter. A lot of tight-knit contests mm -hmm. here in the first week, yeah. aside from Portage and Connemaw Valley. Trips to the left, shotgun set for Updike with a sidecar to his right. He drops back. It's a wide receiver screen to the left. Statler has it. And is he stopped? And he is. Big stop on defense for the Panthers. It's a turnover on downs. And that is what River Valley needs, but they need to capitalize and not turn the ball over here. Better, easy, or it's easier said than done. We'll yes. see what happens. 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ball in their own 20. Game's tied at seven. 34 seconds left. It looked like Connemaw Township would have scored on that drive, but the Panther defense held resilient. And Woodring brings the Calvary back out. I lost my eyes to CV. Does deceive me. I don't see him on the sideline, so yes, he's back out under center. Two men behind him. Handoff. Goes to Sam Yana to find some clearing, and he's got open real estate at the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Sam Yana takes it to the house, 80 yards on one play. Touchdown, Panthers. That's the lightning that River Valley was looking for. It comes courtesy of Sam Yana. First down at the 20. He goes almost untouched, 80 yards for the score, and the Panthers have their first lead of the year. One play, 80 yards, Sam Yanitz takes it to the house. Met him over the course of the summer. He stopped by one of our remote broadcasts. Very bright young man, an even better athlete out there on the field. And Chuck, don't look now, but there's another injured Panther. Yes, <laughs> I won't. But what an electrifying run just down the heart of the field for Sam Yanitz. He knew once he got past that initial cluster of uh, Indian defenders, that it was his, if he could outrun the defense, he did exactly that. And uh, we're trying to see who that um, injured Panther is. Uh, and you hate to see that, especially after an yeah. explosive play like that. Well, good time to tell you, as always, that if you have a minor injury or illness, head over to IRMC at Chestnut Ridge off Old Route 22 in Blairsville. It's a state-of-the-art facility. Offers a wide range of specialized departments like Urgicare, and it's open seven days a week from 8 to 8 for the treatment of any minor illnesses and injuries you have. So as uh, Todd Marino has made in one of his new commercials, if you slice your finger with a potato peeler, I don't oh. know why he was so, so oh. specific, but if you uh, slice your finger up or stub your toe too hard or, you know, Fall ill with the flu. I mean, cold season's right around the corner. Allergy season's now in prime uh, prime time. So 
Um, if that impacts you, head over to IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, all fold route 22 in Blairsville next to the Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort and Conference Center. That's Quinn Whitmer again, cramping up. He's walking off, uh, but albeit gingerly, and he throws his helmet in disgust. But, hey, back to the scoring play. Cole Hackathorn out for he had his second attempt on the air for an extra point. Snap, the hold, everything's fine so far. The kick is on its way, and it dings off the left oh. goal post. No good. But River Valley has the lead. 22 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's 13-7 River Valley. Connemont Township to get the ball next on Cat Country 106.3, catcountry1063fm.com. And we're back for you for the final seconds of this third quarter. Sam Yanitz, an explosive running touchdown, makes it a pretty simple drive summary, Chuck, doesn't it? Yeah, very quick. One play, 80 yards for Yanitz. The uh, point after kick a little wide. We'll see how important that miss is. 22 seconds left, third quarter. Panthers lead to 13-7. Cole Hackathorn tees it off. After missing the extra point, he's now one for two on the day. But, hey, Heck, Cole is a, a sophomore, and we remember last year, uh, he was practicing. He would hit 30, 40-yard field goals. He mm -hmm. takes his kicking very seriously. Had a chance to talk to him at River Valley's Media Day. have a video of that on our uh, Cat Country Facebook page. Lines it up. Pair of Indians back to return this. Actually, three back to return this. Didn't even see the one back there. Cole gives the sign, approaches the ball, gives a nice kick. It's a high one, and it'll be returned rather easily at around the 20. Looking to the left. Dunn has it, and he's gobbled up by a couple of Panthers at around the 32, and that's where Connemont Township will start this offensive drive. 15 seconds left here in the third. This River Valley offense starting to put things together in the second half now. They have 304 total yards compared to 181 for the Indians. Now, they need to hold Connemont Township yes. here. I know that's self-explanatory, but, uh, you know, it seems like and, and we throw it back to last year. One step forward, two steps back. I know it's a brand new year, but you just think about what happened last year. If they can maybe not even force them to go three and out, give up a first down or two maybe, but uh, you can't let them get any points on the board. That's the main focus right here. Albeit, if I'm not mistaken, that's the main focus every time is to hold your <laughs> opponents scoreless. Up Dyke back out there and shotgun set sidecar to his left. Double tights. Sends one in motion from right to left. Updike on the quarterback keep looking for a hole. Faces some heavy contact, and he's brought down in the backfield for a loss of two. Brad McDivitt back there on the tackle for a loss. That's the end of the period, Jake. Yes, it is. That's the end of the third quarter presented by friends of Shereen Hess. We make the switch to the fourth quarter in tonight's contest presented by the locker room at Diamond Drug and Diamond Medical Supply. After three, River Valley leads Connemaw Township 13-7. Final set of 12 coming your way next on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. Little shades of Pittsburgh down here in Salzburg. They're playing renegade as we enter quarter number four in the hometown Panthers with a 13-7 lead over the Connemaw Township Indians. Indians have the ball second and 11 following the quarter intermission. Back to passes up. Dyke sensing some early pressure, throws it, and it's beyond everybody. Pass intended for number six, that being Kyler Mozzie. Brings up third and 11. Third and 11 now for Connemaw Township. River Valley, a little bit of momentum on their side after the 80-yard touchdown rush by Sam Yanitz. They've gotten a yardage lost for Connemaw Township. Now third down, looking to force them to go three and out as we welcome in the fourth quarter. Presented by Diamond Drug and Diamond Medical Supply alongside Chuck Clark, Jake Slobodnik joining you from our S&T Bank broadcast booth, People Forward Banking. Side card up Dykes right, trips to the right. Looking to pass right, he does, and it's oh. dropped by his intended receiver, number five. That's Cam Dunn. It was in and out of his breadbasket, just a mishandled pass. He had the football for two steps, and then didn't have it. I think he was thinking about making some big yardage downfield. Yeah, he was thinking about what lies beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And now that brings up fourth down. Dom Spiel comes out to return the would-be punt. 
Mozzie out to boot this one away. Domsfield back to return this for River Valley. Clock stopped at 11.52 oh. and then a flag. That may be a snap count violation. Again, no field clocks here at the Salzburg facility. That is a penalty on Connema Township. We're thinking illegal substitution up here, but. Well, one thing that we do know is that Connema Township backpedals a couple of feet, and they are hearing it from the River Valley student section. Fourth down, here comes the punt. Nobody was ready for that play, but the punt is away, and this is a line drive kick. Takes a couple of hops and will be down by Connemaw Township at the River Valley 29-yard line, so a decent punt. Almost looked like nobody was ready for it, but <laughs> River Valley will fortunately take over at their own. Now they're going to mark it at the 30. Here at the fourth quarter, 11:39 to play. If River Valley can get a big scoring drive here, that'll help them out. They lead at 13-7. They work left to right here in the fourth quarter across your radio dial. Well, they have 11 minutes, 39 seconds to protect this 13 to seven lead, maybe add to it. Woodring back out under center. He's got two men behind him. Dom Spiel, the lone wide out to the right. Man to the left, I believe that's Rezolovic. Yanitz goes out, but the handoff goes to the fullback, Gavin Burkhardt, plowing over a couple of defenders. It's about halfway to the chains, five-yard carry for Gavin Burkhardt. Took four Indian defenders to bring him down. I'll tell you what, we talk a lot about, you know, Sam Yanitz, what he does. Uh, we've seen Quinn Whitmer take a couple of mm -hmm. big carries, but I'll tell you what, Gavin Burkhardt, inch by inch, has been an under-the-radar com uh, contributor for River Valley today. Second and five from the 35 for the Panthers. And whistle, a whistle, timeout snap. for Connema Township. We'll take 30 seconds, 11 minutes to play in the final quarter. Presented by Diamond Drug and Diamond Medical Supply. With the score, 13-7 in favor of River Valley. We'll be back after this on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. After the timeout, River Valley back out on offense with a second and five ball at their own 35-yard line in between both hash marks. Panthers operating left to right, looking to add some late insurance, leading 13-7. Fake handoff goes to Burkhart. Yanitz takes the handoff, and he's gone. He's got the first at the 50, the 45-40. There's a flag behind the play, and Yanitz is shoved out of bounds on the Connemaw Township side of the field, but I wonder what this flag is going to be. Well, looks like one of the River Valley linemen and one of the defensive linemen for the Indians got tangled up. Unsportsmanlike on River Valley. Whoa. Well, that's a big, big penalty. And one person I saw on the field, and this is just tentatively unless we get more information, Don Bartolini uh, was in the area where the flag was. So I wonder if maybe he threw an extra arm or something after a block. I don't know, but that's pretty. That's It was, uh, it was well after the play. I mean, he was down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, so he just caught Sam Yan. It's a big rush, yes. and that sends him back second and about 15. Wow. Now we're going to say second and 17. So they're going to pitch it back to Sam Yan. It's yet again. He's going to stiff arm a man. He won't uh, really go anywhere. Might have lost a yard, actually. No, no, no. He got uh, three. Excuse me. I looked at the wrong area on the field. 
Or did he go anywhere? Yeah, they're going to give him one. Third and 16. And Woodring will head to the side. In comes Dom Spiel. Oh, Woodring just getting goes his back. Yep, he gets just getting his play call. Thought we were going to see a little Wildcat action there. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we won't see the Wildcats until three weeks, in yeah, two weeks. Three weeks, yep, two weeks. Two weeks from tonight, right here. Last we heard, they were leading Marion Center 7-6 to six in the third. Haven't got a score lately from them. Woodring will empty the backfield. Trips to the right, doubles to the left. Ball in the far hash at the 25. He drops back the pass. Gets a couple of blocks. Scrambles to his right, sensing some pressure. Chucks it deep. And it's complete to Spiel. And is it complete? Yes. Yes! A first down to Dom Spiel. I thought at first he might have went out of bounds, but no, he's inbounds, and that's a big gain, a 25-yard reception. Woodring well, and Spiel turn nothing into something. Give Woodring credit for keeping the football and the play alive. Keep Donnie Spiel credit for watching the quarterback and staying inbounds. That first down brought to you by In First Bank. Check out their In First Bank rewards checking today. That's a gain of 25. Wow. I think that might have been the biggest pass from Luke today. He's now four of seven. First of this second half. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's his first pass in the second half. He finished the first three of six, so I'll wait to rein in your first pass of the half. Woodring on first down, hands it off to Yanitz. Plows through for a couple of Five. yards, and uh, he actually got about seven, I believe, maybe six. Uh, Nearside judge says he got to the 45 of Conema Townships. So that'll be a... Five yard. I was gonna say it didn't look like he didn't. He got that much, but uh, either way, it's positive yardage. Second and five coming up. Clock continuing to tick away at 9:17. That is how long River Valley is from possibly winning their first game of the season. And technically, that would be two wins in a yes, row. Yes, it would. Dating back to last season when they pounded Everett in Week 10. Woodring on second down, another pitch to Yanitz. Why not? He's going to find some real estate. He's got the first. He's down to the 30 and tackled at the 27-yard line. Have yourself a game, Sammy Yanitz. From the 45 all the way down to about the 38. 12 yards on the carry. First and 10, another first down. Brought to you by In First Bank. Yanitz will jog off the field just for a quick breather. Both teams, uh, well, River Valley's got all their timeouts. They got three, and Connemouth Township has two as we are at 8.35 to go in the game. Shotgun set. He's got one side card each side. Woodring drops back to pass. A little screen floater out to Burkhardt. He's got some free room. He's got the first. He's at the 20. Jukes to the right. He's at the five. And he's brought down at the four-yard line. First and goal coming up for River Valley after a 23-yard reception. Well, now this offense is moving. Woodring has attempted two passes this uh, this entire yes. half, and they've gone for both 25 and 23, and now they're four yards away from adding insurance. First and goal at the four. Two consecutive first down plays in a row. 7.51 left. First and goal for the Panthers. This one to create some separation. Woodring goes under center. Two men behind him. That's Burkhart and Barnhart. Woodring takes a snap, fakes the give to, Bur to Barnhart. He gives to Burkhart, dives forward, waiting for the signal. None. No, he's just slightly outside of the goal line. It'll be second and goal at about the half-yard line. And they're going to no huddle it. Woodring on the QB sneak. He's in touchdown. for the touchdown, a one-yard touchdown rush for River Valley. Creates separation. Big, big score right there. They set up at their own 30. That spans 80, oh no, uh, 70 yards to the score. And here comes, uh, well, are they going to try for a two-point conversion here? They might, just to try to keep things in the intervals of seven. 
Let's see what they do either way. Results the same. It's a touchdown for Luke Woodring. That's a second rushing touchdown of the game. They're going to go for two. Woodring goes under center, takes a snap. He's going to roll left on the option play. Trying to follow his block, stiff arms a man, tries treading forward, and what's the call? He got it! Yes. Two-point conversion by Luke Woodring. It's 21-7, 7-10 to go in regulation. The Panthers have some separation. They look to stop the Indians when we return with our fourth quarter. 7-10 to go in the game, 21-7 Panthers on an IRMC High School Sports Night. Cat Country 106.3, catcountry1063fm.com. Cole Hackathorn, uh, a couple things he's got to sort out. Not sure what he's looking at, but uh, while they clear this miscommunication up, River Valley with a 21-7 lead thanks to a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Chuck, what's the drive summary looking like? 70 yards, eight plays, quarterback Luke Woodring from one yard out, converted on the two-point conversion, and that puts the Panthers up 21-7 with 7-10 to play in the game. Drive summaries all season long driven by Luther Ford in Homer City and the Luther family of dealerships, including the new Luther Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Hackathorn lines the ball up to tee it off. Approaches it, boots it away. Probably his best kick tonight. Forces the returner to backpedal a couple of feet. He's got it, trying to find some clearing. He's at the 30 yard line before being shoved back and now a mob of players before the play is whistled dead. Well, now the defense has its job, leading 21-7 with just over seven minutes to play. They got seven minutes, yep, as Chuck said, a little over seven minutes to do so. Conwell Township has not scored since the late goings of the second quarter. Despite a strong running game, River Valley has had their number throughout uh, the majority of the second half up to this point, but hey, anything can turn on a dime. Up Dyke back out there for Conama Township. Goes in shotgun set, sidecar to his right, trips to the right, drops back to pass, looking to pass on first down since it's a pressure, and it is picked off! Picked off by Jack Rummel! And he's still on the run before being knocked out of bounds at the 10 yard line. There you go. I don't know how Rummel came down with that. He was fumbling with it on his fingertips and somehow hauled it in while spinning around. Concentration. First interception of the season by Jack Rummel. First Commonwealth Quick Stats, first Commonwealth Bank. Pay fewer bills in the deck consolidation loan time to be first member FDIC. Well, River Valley now, look at that. First and goal at the 10. 6.51 to play. Can Luke Wudrin get his third rushing touchdown of the game, or who, who will he uh, spread the wealth around? Wudrin and Yanitz each have a rushing touchdown today. Wudrin with two. A couple men behind him. Pitch goes back to Vreslovic. Vreslovic, excuse me, powers forward back to the 10, no gain. Seemed like a broken play from the start. Yes, it did. But hey, you're up 21-7, late goings. Your momentum's on your side. You can no, afford. This is where you just need to take your time, use as much clock before the snap as possible. You and know what? Hopefully, come up with another score. You know what? I don't care what happens. I want Cole Hackathorn to come out and kick a field goal. Well, that too. Sophomore kicker gets his first field goal of the season on his first try. That'd be something. I don't know. I'm rooting for Cole. He's been. He was really funny at media day. Really cool guy. On second and goal, toss goes to Sam Yanitz, jukes left, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown eluded. Two tackles, Sam Yanitz, his second rushing touchdown of the game. From 10 yards out, and I believe that will put the nail in the coffin.
Two play drive, 10 yards. Sam Yannitz from 10 yards out. Hackathorn out for the extra point. He is one for two today. Snap, the hold by Woodring. The kick is on its way, and it is good. 28 to seven, River Valley leads it. I don't think we've seen this explosive of a first game no. since uh, what 2021 when they ho when uh, the Panthers hosted United Valley at uh, uh, Ernie Widmar Field. Yeah. I think the only game I did that year with you. <laughs> well, 6:05 to go in the game. We'll keep it right here. After the 10-yard rush by Luke, by uh, Sam Yen, it's his second rushing tot of the game. And a very brief drive summary, Chuck, what did you say? Yep, well, Sam Yannitz takes it in from 10 yards out. It only took two plays. And that drive puts them up 28-7 with a point after kick. I think it's safe to say at this point we can name our Colonial Auto Group drive of the game. And the drive of the game presented by Colonial Auto Group, including to Colonial Toyota and Colonial Motor Mart in Indiana. Flashing it back a couple of drives go, uh, where is a one-play 80-yard touchdown rush by Sam Yannitz. That gave the Panthers the lead. And uh, beside a missed extra point, that was in the waning seconds of the third. And that set the tone for the River Valley offense throughout the remainder of the game. So that 80-yard rushing touchdown by Yanitz, his first and uh, first of the game, our drive of the game, one play, 80 yards, that gave the Panthers the lead. Drive of the game brought to you by Colonial Auto Group in Indiana. Hackathorn tees it up. Cole approaches the ball, boots it away, a line drive kick to the right side. Return it around the 19 yard line by number two. And he's met at around the 25 yard line by number 81, Micah Griffith who went off the field earlier with a cramp, and now he's out there making an explosive tackle on special teams. In the fourth quarter, six minutes to go. River Valley leading at 28-7. They trailed at the half 7-0, and have since then put up 28 unanswered points throughout the second half. Conemont Township will take over at their own 27. So Updike try to lead a charge back. Goes in shotgun set, will low the right side. Drops back, sensing some pressure, almost sacked. Passes it off to the right. It is caught by his intended target, that being number six, uh, Kyler Mozzie. It's about uh, four yards, I'd say. Second and six coming up for Cotamau Township. 5.30 to go in the game. Indians have two timeouts remaining. Panthers have three. Double wide to each side, side guard up Dykes right. He drops back the pass on second down. Looking for a man, sensing some pressure. Fires it on the run. He's got his man. That's a first down. And that's Mozzie yet again. Went from the 32 all the way down to the 43, so about a nine, uh, an 11 yard reception. First and 10 now for Conemaugh Township. First down brought to you by In First Bank. Check out their rewards checking program today. Side card up like's left, double wise to each side, a little screen pass out to the right, it is complete. Hervanic powers forward for about five yards. Sean Shirley in on the tackle. Brings up a second and five following that completion. Approaching four minutes here in regulation. It is 28-7 River Valley over Conemaugh Township at the time. 
Up Dyke side Carter was right double wides to each side yet again. He drops back. Really emphasizing the pass, this offensive drive and meeting him in the backfield. It looked like Brad McDivitt gets a throw off before being brought down. And I wonder if they're going to talk about this. The head official has his flag out. And yep, yeah. there it is, intentional <laughs> grounding. He did not get out of the pocket. And uh, just waiting for the official call here. Yep, grounding. That'll be a loss of down. And should be about third and maybe 20. Let's see where they put it. I put it at the 33, I believe. So, yeah, it's about a 20 yard loss. Third and 20 coming up. They got about a mile to go. Let's see if they can keep this drive alive. I'd imagine if River Valley stops and we're going to see some of the reserves come in for the remainder of the game. Shotgun set. Updike drops back. Gets a little floater pass off, and it's hauled in by his intended target. And he's clobbered. Doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And then a late flag comes in. That from the far corner, Judge. More than likely when it comes in late like that, it's going to be personal foul. Mm -hmm. Pass is complete. Eight of 17 now for John Updike. Oh, no, it's a blindside block on Connema Township. All right. So it looks like we're going to replay third down. So. so that'll set up a third and 27. Stick around because after the game, we're going to have our first Commonwealth Bank post game show. We're going to interview both coaches from the side. Might even get a player up here as well. I'll just have to see what happens. Clock is ticking. 3.05 left in the fourth quarter. And Economont Township just taking their grand old time, trying to devise something perfect up. I mean, they got third and 27 at the 27. They still haven't broken their huddle, and we're under three minutes to play. On third down, Updike trying to do it himself with his feet. Somebody's got him by the jersey. That's number 14, Nathan Morshide. He makes forward for forward progress down at around the 37. So about a 10-yard carry by Updike. We'll bring up fourth, and uh, we'll see. What's well, third and 27, uh, seven-yard carry? Fourth and long, fourth and 20 for Connemaw Township. So with the win tonight, River Valley will move to 1-0 and to host uh, or to face Purchase Line on the road next week. And Connemaw Township will fall to 0-1. They will take on Portage. That one's booted away, and it'll just take a Connemaw Township roll all the way down to the 13-yard line before it is finally down. So here comes River Valley back out. Probably going to see some new faces in. Let's see if they change quarterbacks. Brachetti's warmed up a couple of times tonight. Well, I would. You're up 28-7. It's a very humid day. Yeah. Try to save some energy for these guys. And, yep, I see, uh, see Jack Rommel coming off. We'll see what he does. And Max Brachetti is wearing number two. Yes. I don't think he's in. No, it looks like the starters are going back okay. out there. The minute 46 left. And... Uh, Got to think they'll just be uh, running it down here. Woodring under center, two men behind him, one wide out to each side. Pitch goes back to, I think that's Sam Ewing. Yep, Sam Ewing gets the pitch. Moves forward for about a four-yard, or maybe a five-yard carry.
We're going to say four, second and six. So Sam Ewing makes his debut for the River Valley Panthers this year. And the funny thing is, Chuck, before tonight, he never played it down of football. <laughs> never Good. too late to learn. No, but um, he has played, uh, I, I think, uh, I talked with Coach Hauser about this, and I forget what he said. But uh, we were talking with somebody up here, and I think they were related to Sam, and they said they might get him into rugby next. And I'm like, well, that's a step up. Yeah. Next handoff, back to Ewing. He drops it, and Connemont Township will fall on top of it. Luke Weber on the uh, fumble recovery. So now with 57 seconds left. Well, Connemont Township could make this 20-14 game. They have 57 seconds to work with. Chuck, if you can, can you tally up some uh, final stats for us? Uh, we're looking here for that. That way we can get one step ahead for the post game. So again, next week, we'll be in, per in Commodore taking on the Purchase Line Red Dragons following the River Valley Panthers. Our airtime with our Indiana Total Therapy pregame is 6.30 uh, from Purchase Line. Haven't been out there personally, but I've heard some good things about their press box. Oh, yeah. And the Red Dragons, definitely a good football team. Uh, rough year for them last year, but uh, this year, looking to rebound. So Connemont Township, in what will most likely be their final offensive drive, they sent in a couple new players. Uh, Sam Schaefer in at quarterback. And Sean Shirley able to bring down the receiver, and I believe on the reception, Dom Bambino. Maybe. Twenty-eight seconds and counting. They line up on the right side hash mark at the 15-yard line. Schaefer gets it. Muffed snap. He'll find a hole on the right side, though, and before he's brought down, 12 seconds to play. Let's see if Connemont Township calls a timeout or if they're just going to let this one play out. Seven seconds left. Nope. That's all she wrote. River Valley, two straight wins dating back to last year. They open up the 2023 campaign with a 28-7 win over the Connemont Township Indians. What a turnaround from the start of last season. River Valley crushing Everett in Week 10 last year and then starting off this Heritage Conference campaign with a big win over the newcomer, Connemont Township. And, hey, Chuck, they're 1-0 at Salzburg. They are undefeated, looking for win number two. And that'll be next week. Don't go anywhere. Our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show is next. First Commonwealth Bank. Pay fewer bills with the debt consolidation loan. Time to be first. Member FDIC. That's the game from Salzburg. River Valley with a 28-7 win over Connemouth Township. We'll hear coaches' comments and all that coming up next on Cat Country 106.3. Back with you on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. First Commonwealth Bank, pay fewer bills, the debt consolidation loan. Time to be first member FDIC, the River Valley Panthers, with a 28-7 win over the newcomer, Connemont Township Indians. And, Chuck, uh, it feels refreshing. It feels good if you're a River Valley fan to walk away week one with a win. Feels like a completely different team, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does. Remember last year when they faced Portage week one, it was uh, – and uh, it was it was ugly, to say the least. Yes. And the, another perk, this game didn't have an hour, 40-minute lightning delay. That's true, that's true. But, uh, yeah, but the lightning was out on the field and um, still awaiting some coaches up here. We're going to name our player of the game, our drive of the game, brought to you by Colonial Auto Group. Came back in the third quarter with 34 seconds. River Valley's Sam Yanitz took it 80 yards to the house on the only play of the drive. That gave them the lead despite a missed extra point. They held that lead, 28 unanswered points after trailing at the half for River Valley. Yeah, that's a couple rushing touchdowns, and same with uh, Luke Woodring. And we'll have final stats for you coming up. And uh, not seeing Coach Studer. Don't know where Coach oh, Hauser. Here comes Hauser. I see Hauser. We'll take a time. Yeah, we'll take a timeout, come back with more of our First Commonwealth Bank postgame report next. First Commonwealth Bank, pa uh, pay fewer bills, the debt consolidation loan, time to be first member FDIC. 28 7, our final. Coach Hauser next on Cat Country 106 3.
What a finish for the River Valley Panthers. They opened the season on a winning note, 28 to seven over the Connemaw Township Indians. A uh, little bit of a rude welcome, or a warm welcome for the Indians, if you will. Uh, Coach, second win in a row dating back to last season. And uh, the first thing that you said when you came up is you guys played a second half of football. Tell me how it feels to pick up a win in your opening game of the season. Uh, this is great. Last year we went through uh, nine games without winning, and we finally got the last one to win. And uh, it's just great coming out here ahead just tonight. You had a lot of uh, contributors in the game, uh, Luke Woodring being one of them. Sam Yanitz, another explosive game for him coming out of the bat. Uh, Gavin Burkhardt, a big contributor. You also had Sean Shirley. He was in on defense as well. Uh, it was a well-complete game for you, and a lo everybody seemed to just step up. Oh, definitely. Our, I mean, our defense, they played lights out. They were getting people to the ball. All 11 guys were getting the ball every time. Nathan Morshide had a great game on defense and linebacker. They were just all getting after it. Yeah, and uh, John Updike, who was normally a big running quarterback, he's more of a mobile guy. You guys uh, held him under 100 rushing yards, and uh, while he picked up some momentum in that first half, you guys seemed to shut him down in the second half. What was one thing that you noticed about Updike's game coming into the second half? Uh, we just started putting, putting hits on him. Once we started putting hits on him, he slowed down a little bit. We were getting to the ball and team tackling. That's the way you got to go. So this is their first game in the Heritage Conference. They get a taste of uh, what you guys can bring. Uh, is this sort of reminiscent as to what we can see throughout the season from you guys? Oh, definitely, definitely. We're going to rotate and get a bunch of people in, try to stay fresh, and uh, we're going to keep flying up down the field. Speaking of rotating people in, uh, you guys had to overcome a very humid night, a very hot night out there. We had several players go down with uh, with injuries. Um, how important was it to keep these guys hydrated and make sure they stayed in the game? Oh, it was very important. I mean, that's why we have good subs behind them, get them in. Guys were cramping, like you said, it was humid, humid out, and that's what we have to do. These guys get off, get a blow. we got fresh guys in there. And I think that kind of speaks to the athletic training staff because they were out there all the time. They carried water bottles. Uh, how did they sort of help keep your guys in the game tonight? Uh, just keeping the kids hydrated and keeping them loose, keeping the cramps off. And uh, Marissa did a great job, our trainer, and our water boys did a great job, and it was an overall team effort tonight. Going back to Connemaw Township, you see what they can bring. Uh, what's your first impression of how the Indians play this season? Uh, they're going to win some games here in the Heritage. They're a tough team, physical team. Uh, I think we stopped playing them in the second half because we were fresh rotating guys in. That was it. You're now 1-0 in Salzburg. Uh, you, we kind of talked about in the offseason how much a change of location would sort of help these players. Um, but you also had the home support. There were a lot of Salzburg people that were happy to just have a, a football game out here for once in, you know, how many uh, – uh, over a year. Yeah. You, the student section was packed, lots of home support. What's it like knowing that you have that support, whether you're in Blairsville or Salzburg? Oh, it's great. These fans are great. They travel with us, and uh, hopefully next weekend they're traveling to Purchase Line so we can go up there and get the job done here. Uh, there was a couple times you guys had a couple defensive lapses. Some guys got a little chirpy. I don't know if it was because of the weather or uh, just because of the intensity of the game. But uh, they, they kept a level head, and I think that was one of the biggest parts of the game was making sure these guys stayed disciplined in order to pick up the win. Yeah, we told them no, no, no stupid penalties. We have to keep our composure out there on the field, and I believe we did a good job at that tonight. Okay, individual performances. Luke Woodring, uh, another big game for him under center. It looked like he really did grow in the offseason. Uh, a couple rushing touchdowns. A couple good passes despite a rough first uh, first half. What are your impressions on Luke tonight? Uh, Luke, come on. He's just the nervous he ever been. You know what I mean? Playing at home his senior night. Last time playing. Uh, walking out for his first game his senior night, senior year. And uh, he just played well. I mean, he got up and down the field after it. Sam Yanitz, 80-yard touchdown rush. Uh, final stat, 12, 12 carries, 135 yards, two touchdowns. Um, again, this is something that we kind of knew Sam could bring to the table, but to see it in the first week, it's got to feel really special to see. Yeah, and Sam wouldn't have did it without the line up front and our fullbacks. They were actually picking up blocks today, and uh, it was an overall team effort. And Sammy, once he gets going, he gets going. You know what I mean? He hits that speed and that gear, and he goes. Now, uh, this is a good win to carry over to next week. You guys are on the road for your first away game of the season. You're at purchase line. Last we heard, they were they were uh, staying in check with uh, Cambry Heights. Last we heard, 13-7, they were leading. Um, but you know what purchase line seems to bring every year. Uh, what's the general, general assessment on what the Red Dragons can bring for you guys? Uh, Matt Felizic, the coach up our purchase line. He'll have them guys physical, ready to play. They get after they got a good quarterback and John Ellick. Uh, we just have to get it him. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight, and we'll talk to you next week. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. Coach Jess Hauser on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show is Panthers winning at 28-7 to to start off the season. And uh, we'll be back with more of our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show up next on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com.
Back with you at Salzburg, and joining us on the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show is Brandon Studer, head coach of the Connemaw Township Indians. They fall on this one 28-7. to Well, Coach, first thing i got to ask you, you got one game under your belt here in the Heritage Conference and with Connemaw Township. Uh, didn't pan out the way you want, but I'm sure there were a lot of good things to take away from tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we knew it was going to be a fight. Uh, we know what the Heritage Conference brings, and it didn't disappoint tonight. We know it's going to be physical week in and week out. Um, I thought we put a good half together, um, but halves don't win your football games. So, uh, we got to work on, on cleaning up some stuff. We made a lot of mental mistakes. Uh, we left a lot of plays out there on the table. Um, but I'll give it to, to River Valley and their coaching staff and the boys. I mean, they came to play in that second half, and they played harder than we did. Uh, I know halves don't win football games, but for that first half, you guys were in command. You take a 7 nothing lead into halftime. You shut them out in the first half. Uh, what went right that first half for you guys to sort of help keep River Valley in check? Yeah, I mean, we knew coming into it uh, that River Valley was, was physical. Um, again, that's it's the, the the trademark of the Heritage Conference. So we knew we were going to have to be disciplined. We knew we were going to have to pick up blocks. Uh, we had, I thought, what was a solid game plan coming in today, and I thought we executed that in the first half. Um, in the second half, uh, you know, we, we missed blocking assignments. Uh, they started to get some penetration. Um, you know, we had a long play called back, which kind of swung the momentum back to the, to the Panthers, and um, they capitalized on it. So, again, kudos to, to the River Valley Panthers tonight. I remember in our pregame conversation, one thing you said is that you guys were treating tonight like a challenge. Um, can you sort of maybe size up uh, how your players stood up to the challenge tonight against a new team and a new environment and a new conference? Yeah, I mean, we weren't looking for perfection, and I've been I've been kind of preaching that all all camp long. Um, it's a long season, and, and there's a lot of plays in a football game. And, you know, I'm, I'm not asking for perfection out of these boys. I'm just asking for their best effort every single play. And in the first half, again, um, I don't want to keep going back and beating the halves to death, but in the first half, we did compete every play. Um, in the second half, um, you know, we had we had we missed some some tackles that led to big plays, and, and you can I mean in any any athletic event you can feel the momentum swing, and when you're on the if you're on the the opposite side of that you got to find something to bring you back, and 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 we did that um, a couple times tonight, but again they capitalized more than we did. One of the bright spots tonight, John Up John Updike for you guys uh, fills in at the quarterback role, very mobile guy. Uh, he broke a couple tackles here and there. Uh, what were your thoughts on how he handled under center tonight? Yeah, John's a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal kid. He's been a huge leader for us this year, um, and w w that's our expectation of him. And he's going to need to do that week in and week out if we're going to be successful. Um, around him, you know, I, and again, I was very uh, open about this, is we got a lot of new guys that are, are looking to fill those roles, and, and they're capable of doing it. They just have to be more confident. Next week you guys face Portage, um, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you guys face Portage on the road. Uh, Cambria County team, they are a hard-hitting team. Nonetheless, I know we watched them all last year, and tonight they beat up on Connemaw Valley. Uh, what can you tell us from what you know about Portage coming up? Sure, we go long way with Portage. Um, I played against Portage in high school um, at the other Connemaw, and then now we're going back there um, as an Indian uh, next weekend. But uh, Portage is tough. They have their, their history of their program has been tough. I mean, they've been tough for a really long time. So um, if we don't clean up uh, the mistakes uh, that, that we had this evening and if we don't get penetration and set the edges, it's going to be a long weekend next next week. But um, we'll go back. We'll game plan um, pretty hard this weekend and start implementing next week. But I know Coach Slonick will have those Mustangs ready for us next week. First one's always tough, Coach, but uh, try to bounce back next week against Portage, all right? Absolutely. That's Coach Brandon Studer of the Connemaw Township Indians, a team falling 28-7 to the River Valley Panthers. We'll come back and wrap things up from our S from our ST Bank broadcast booth. Our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show continues on Cat Country 106.3 and catcountry1063fm.com. Final score from River Valley in Salzburg, 28-7. The Panthers picking up a win in their first game of the season over the Connemaw Township Indians. And, Chuck, I think it goes without saying, our player of the game tonight? Sam Yannitz. Absolutely. Finished the game 12 carries, 135 yards, two touchdowns, even at an 80-yard touchdown to his credit. couple defensive heroes tonight for River Valley. Brad McDivitt with a tackle for a loss and an interception by number 11, Jack Rummel, that coming in the fourth quarter. Luke Woodring finished the night 5 of 8 passing, 91 yards and an interception. Uh, he did finish with two rushing touchdowns, though, so that is a good thing for him. 
Uh, but he'll have to wait till next week, try to get a passing touchdown. John Updike, eight, eight uh, passes, eight pass completions for 17, uh, 17 attempts. Let me try that again. John Updike, eight for 17, passing with 70 yards and an interception. Total yardage for the game, River Valley 384, Connemont Township 289. Well, Chuck, put a lid on it. What do you think about this first week? I think the key statement for tonight came from Coach Houser when he said, we played a second half. Yep, and that was the first thing he led with when we came yep. up here. And that was the thing, because last year, how many times did they play mm. you know, both halves? They looked great in the first, and in the second, they just sort of crumbled. Tonight, they, they they start off a little shaky in the first half, not as bad as what we've seen. And in the second half, they put mm -hmm. it all together, 28 unanswered points. It's just unreal. Well, Chuck, thanks so much. We'll see you next week at Purchase Line. We'll be there. And uh, I want to thank Chuck for our uh, for being my broadcast partner tonight. I want to thank Lucas Wills back in our Mount Pleasant window and remodeling studios. Did a great job tonight getting us on the air to you. I want to thank all of our sponsors. And we also want to thank, again, Point Street Tavern, for, Tavern in Salzburg for feeding our Cat Country crew today with the Mule and the Martin. And mm -hmm. the Martin's got our seal of approval. The mm -hmm. Mule, we're going to have to test more whenever we take it back because we were – we uh, couldn't eat it all the way, so we'll, we'll test it out tonight, let you know next week. I want to thank so much all of you for tuning in here tonight. River Valley victorious in their opening game in the 2023 season by a score of 28-7. For all of us, my name is Jake Slobodnik, bidding you farewell and good, we uh, good evening. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you next Friday at Purchase Line here on Cat Country 106.3. All right, Luke, I'm going to tally a couple final stats. You want to go ahead and get things ready for the wraps? Okay. Grab a chair. <clears throat> and... Only 17 to become.